<laughs> in two years, that's a 30 year old movie. Oh, thanks for that. Uh, oh, tonight you're getting old message brought to you by <laughs> Dr. B. Come on, the one with the gray beard. <laughs> Hey. Hey. Hello. Hi. Oh, uh, okay. we're all realizing question. we're getting old. Uh, in okay, two my, years, Wayne's world turns thirty. What does? Uh, in two years, Wayne's, Wayne's world turns thirty. Uh, it still holds up. It does. I just don't want a Wayne's World three at this point. That would you, be very awkward. Uh, yeah. I think it's Dan Carvey. <laughs> so, so I think Dana Carvey wants anything at this point. After uh, that, what was the Master of Disguise? His stand-up did special, did really well on Netflix. Oh, he's yeah. great stand-up. <laughs> Hello, Water Shrink. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. We've got our crew. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed everybody. Wait, it's world six. No, it's way more. It's world six. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, has everybody recovered from the packs? The packs. Yes, yeah. The packs. Yeah, <laughs> now we're planning for another packs. Yeah. Yes, yeah. today was deadline day for submissions. Today still is here. It is still today. <laughs> I will be working on those. I will be finalizing all of those when I get home at 10 o'clock. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I thought the deadline was Saturday, so I was like getting everything done extended. Friday night. Yeah, yeah, they, they were nice and, and doing that because, ah, uh, yes, we've got to get the... <laughs> well, welcome back to Clinical Role. This is the d d stream where we have a bunch of therapeutic dungeon masters and psychologists playing Dungeons and Dragons. Um, for those of you who joined us last week, we had a humongous announcement, which was that we are going to be having a secondary game. Uh, so this group is the primary group. We are the alpha group, right? <laughs> of Moon Fang, Wolf Fang, Ghost Flag. <laughs> and uh, the next group will be hosted by none other than a ma working now at Game to Grow, Jared Kilmer. I'm calling them the Kill Squad for fun right now. So. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. Uh, and uh, we're going to announce one of the players here in a little bit, but not right now. I'm going to tease wait, it. What? 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to tease players for a little bit. But, um, but anyway, hello. Welcome. Um, what announcements does everybody have? What, what kinds of amazing things are you all doing? Because like we oh, haven't oh, talked oh. in forever. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, can, can I vent for a moment about my announcement for what it's about to do to my stress level in the next few weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Most certainly. I think it's a necessary time. <laughs> so... Uh, I will be at doing a panel at TwitchCon <laughs> this upcoming weekend uh, with a bunch of amazing folks like uh, Tanya to Past and uh, God, who else is on that? Adam Koble. Um, yeah, no, there's some great folks on that one. Uh, but I'm I, I come back to Seattle for like two days. Then I fly to Washington, D.C. to do a small APA convention on Tech and Mind. Then I fly from D.C. to, to Ottawa. And go see me. Rachel and I are going to take a train hey. to Toronto for the inaugural, the International Game Summit on Mental Health, that take this as part of planning. And then I go and do a working vacation in New York. And uh, then I come back for a week. And then Game Hole Con! My October is spoken for. Yeah! What is a working vacation? Uh, I mean, yeah. I, will, I will be working, just not here. <laughs> working from a place that is not home. Yeah, vacation. Uh -huh. I don't know. I will do some but... fun things. <gasps> I will just not be in Seattle. Yes. Uh, I, I just saw Scumman's been subbed, I think, am I saying this right, for six months? Oh, wow. Thank oh, my so God. Good. That's awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Wow. Nice. Awesome. You turned 30. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Mazizzle talk. I mean, you're so young. 
Seriously. 30 is fun. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> it was a good year when I heard it. Almost 20 years ago for me. Uh, <laughs> Almost 10 years ago for me. <laughs> so, so I again have the crown of OFH. We'll just vote here. Yep. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh we and any announcements? um we no. are busy <laughs> i mean not for cons we are uh, so we start groups this week our our uh, uh therapeutic social skills groups using dungeons and dragons we have eight groups now um, 60 cool. kids a week come to play dungeons and dragons um so that's exciting that's been my entire life for the past couple of months is uh, organizing how to get 60 kids in different groups at different times around the greater <laughs> Seattle area. I'm very excited that we're actually going to start groups this week so I can maybe sleep eventually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can announce here, although I'll be making an official announcement soon, uh, we finally have in hand, you guys can't see any of this. These are the <laughs> dice from uh, Critical oh. Core, the special level up dice that we got from Critical Core. We finally have them in hand. We will be working on getting these shipped out to all the backers uh, who helped support at that level. So I'm really excited to have them. They look amazing. They look absolutely incredible. Um, I will be using them for my dice for the today's stream. Awesome. Nice. Right. What are you going to do if they roll really bad for you? I actually already tried rolling it, and my first roll was a 20. So uh, oh, okay. Yes. All right. They're, <laughs> They're just good. You guys, you guys will have the same result, I'm sure. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Adam guarantees you'll get twenties with these dice. At least one. At least probably one time that's out what of I said. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Results may vary. Guaranteed, not included. Get <laughs> <laughs> thunder, not included. Jim actually has a a, a walking um, uh, a tagline for me that any guarantees made by Adam Johns are not actual guarantees. It should not be should not be considered. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Does your mustache have that? Does your mustache have an announcement? I don't know, but it's been twitching a bit. It, it's got something of what it would like to say, and apparently, what it would like to say is, "I'm an 1890s villain." <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Young Petunia <laughs> will be tied up to the railroad track forthwith. Forth <laughs> and I will. You can't defeat me this time. I will get the orphans' money. <laughs> the orphans have much money, but I'll I, get it. I will get all of it. Oh, you're nothing but a scurvy little spider. What are my plans, plans for world are? domination? Well, my plans for world domination are very akin to, to Hank Scorpio from The Simpsons. Okay? That's I'm going to be pattern. the best boss ever. I'm just going to be a supervillain in the process. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Jack, tell us about Save Against Fear. Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, Save Against Fear is uh, just a little bit under three short weeks away. Uh, we still have tickets available for sale. So many wonderful things. We have 11 special guest designers, uh, including uh, Doug Lewandowski from Kids on Bikes, Eddie Webb from Pugmire, uh we uh, uh there's just so many uh, we have all the information available at uh www.thebodonagroup.org uh additionally our uh professional trainings that are basically our 101 and 201 about therapeutic gaming were just recently approved for uh continuing education hours through the national bureau for certified counselors so uh all of that information can be found, uh, again, either on our Facebook page or our main web page. And we are on the route for breaking last year's attendance uh, of 413. So we're looking at hopefully breaking five or 600 this year. So if you're in the Pennsylvania area or Alperts uh, nearby, please come on out and join us for three days of role-playing, board games, card dice, tournaments, panels, workshops, all for charity, all proceeds benefit the Rodana Group, our mission of using tabletop gaming for education, skill building, and therapy. So I will say, as an attendee yes. of Save Against Tour, I think it was 2015, it was that a fantastic correct. experience. You have all that and the opportunity to get a donut that's shaped like a hamburger. 
<laughs> Tell me more about this. Thing, I'm lying. I'm lying. <laughs> All that. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts doesn't really exist in Seattle very much. It's, it's shaped so like a hamburger. It was just a Dunkin' Donuts. Yes. Oh, uh, we went to Zipping and Sphere recently. Uh, it showed up in my like, you know, Instagram <laughs> memories or Facebook memories or something like that. And it was like a picture that I took that I. It I did like, look just Thank like a you hamburger. so much, Bodana Group. Uh, for you know, having a <laughs> for saving and sphere. Here's a picture of a donut that's shaped like a hamburger that's tasting like a donut. <laughs> so a donut made from woodland. Is is that what we're getting to there? <laughs> donut ham- hamburger. Come come for the therapeutic gaming. Stay for the donuts shaped can, like hamburger. Can I just point out really quick for all of us? We're all professionals in this field of, of <laughs> games and applied RPGs and geek therapy. And can I just say? How amazing it is that you can go to Save Against Fear and collect CEUs for, yeah. as a therapist, learning about using role playing games or or using games in therapy. Is that is that not just the most amazing thing in the world? That is that is time well, yeah. to be alive. I actually did have a second, and I can announce this one. It wasn't quite finalized, but uh, the Critical Strengths Engine, uh, which is part of a partnership between the Bodana Group and iThriveGames.org. Uh, will actually be presented and highlighted uh, by sessions not only run by myself, who is running the Bodana Room, waiting for the sun, but also uh, Kelly and Max from iThrive's uh, iThrive will also be there talking about the Critical Strengths Engine and running other play sets. So it is another opportunity for therapists to actually play with therapists and to be run through therapist-led sessions of uh, role-playing games designed for that purpose. So it's another another way that that professional pass really benefits uh, professionals out there. That is spectacular. Yeah. Super cool. I know, right? And we all love Thank Kelly you. from my Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Is Kelly in chat? If not, that was waste. She should be. It was waste. That was totally waste. <laughs> 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 I want to tell Kelly. All right. that. <laughs> Yeah, don't tweet it, Kelly. <laughs> Rachel, do you have any announcements? Or um, my Kickstarter, Pragmatic Princess, is going to the printers this week, which is Woo-hoo! pretty exciting. Yes, Randall's here. Randall, poor Randall. Randall's working twenty three out of twenty four hours a day to get that to happen. But well, at least he's sleeping. He has one hour a day. <laughs> one hour a day to sleep. It's uh, adequate. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not. It is not <laughs> adequate. You need at least seven hours need of more. sleep. You need more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have to <laughs> fill out my survey for them. Oh, very good. If you haven't very filled out your survey, out fill out your survey. survey. I filled, I filled out my survey. Good. I still haven't filled out my survey for Critical Core. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have to do <laughs> But I filled out my survey for Pregnatic Princess. Good. That's, that's what counts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of Kickstarter, our good friends, Gem Hammer, have a oh, Kickstarter yeah. going on right now that looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. It's uh, a bunch of spells that are they're making for fifth edition. Um, they've hit a few of their stretch goals, and I really want them to get to all the stretch goals because like they've got some amazing ones, like the um was like the epically enhanced familiars. It's like that's like one of the second to last ones, and I think if you get up through all the stretch goals, it's going to be a hundred spells because it started wow. off. I, if I remember, I might be misremembering. If Gem Hammers in the chat, I apologize for missing you to begin with. I think it started with fifty. That's most of their decks are fifty, but it can get with all the stretch goals. They're adding two spells every other stretch goal they hit, mm-hmm. so it will get up to I think a hundred spells. And we already have Dabney's Eat Magic. Yes, Dabney's Eat Magic will be in there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what and, it's gonna be. <laughs> and speaking of uh Gem here, where we are gonna do a giveaway tonight. Uh, now our shipping department at Geeks Like Us sucks. <laughs> it completely sucks. I really need to fire our shipping department. Um so Scott Man, um know this, a very strongly worded letter has been sent to the shipping department, signed by me. <laughs> And I promise really hard to get to the post office tomorrow. <laughs> so. If it makes me feel any better. We have something that, that was supposed to be sent to Son of a. Uh, uh, I'm forever ago. I'm so, so sorry. Son of it it may be that Game to Grow's. I still have it. Game to Grow's <laughs> department and your shipping department need to uh, make it a new venture. <laughs> Maybe they need like some training on proper shipping <laughs> protocols. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, so by me, said to me. Uh, but we will be giving away tonight the Compendium of Wild Beasts. Uh, so for anybody who plays druid characters, this is great. Um, it's a uh, hundred stat blocks for fifth edition. So most of your common beasties that you can turn into are in here. Um, and it's really nice because you can just pull it. Actually, I might have my uh, opened copy. I do. Okay. <laughs> this is my person, my copy of this, but on these, so you've got blink, like this is the blink dog oh, and it's so long. Oh my Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> that is horrible. It's just that is horrible. Oh, it's all on me. So it's a miracle you still have it. Oh. Scott, man, I don't feel as bad now. I have. A, I mean, I'm I just at over a month. That is just overflowing. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So these are like you've got your sharks and things. It has your swim speed, your attack ratings, all, all that stuff. Um, it's really handy to have cards. I like the, I like using spell cards and things too. Um, so when you're playing a caster, especially druids, like this kind of stuff is amazing. So, uh, what we're going to do for the giveaway tonight, is going to be, um, the keyword's going to be uh, exclamation point, just druid. So if you play a druid and you want, Animal Beasties cards, that will be our giveaway tonight, and our chatbot will be taking care of that. Oh, <laughs> it's cool. Can I say an addition to the Hammer and Sons? Uh, <laughs> courtesy of uh, connecting to them through you, uh, Jim Hammer and Sons is one of the donors for Save Against Fear. They donated oh. to us. Awesome. Oh, Jim Hammer! Support. So an additional thank Lovely. you to uh, the wonderful Jim Hammer and Sons. So, oh, that's uh, awesome. They're amazing. So. They are. They are. They are. Yeah. And guys, seriously, like, do check out their Kickstarter. And yeah. um, if you can uh, support it, I think it's going to – I have I love all of the products that they have. I think the Deck of Sunder, Deck of Blunders, and Deck of, Deck of Wonder for sure <laughs> really make this game. Um, mm -hmm. So – Without further ado, I'm going to do a quick announcement for the Kill Squad. Oh, I'm excited. So the first player that we will announce might not be too much of a surprise to anybody here, but will be none other than an Elizabeth Kilmer. Oh. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I, very good. <sighs> yes. She's very good. She is. She's she is. fabulous and does amazing things with therapeutic role-playing games as well. So, And she also... Looks like the guys that came to grow. <laughs> He's moderately okay. Will yeah. the Kill Squad be also on Mondays? Yes, that is the plan, that we are going to alternate Mondays. So it hopefully, like, with schedules aligning, like, all, like, in a, an Eclipse fashion, pretty much every Monday you're going to have a clinical role, whether it's Ghost Fang Clan or Kill Squad. They might not call themselves the Kill Squad. I'm calling them the Kill Squad. We're going to call them the Kill Squad. <laughs> yeah, it's a good Yeah. <laughs> it's Listen, only one L, though, because it's Kilmer with one L. So that's. Yeah, no, yeah. Kill, hashtag Kill Squad. <laughs> yeah, just one L, though. So kill, K I L. <laughs> yeah. Unless, of course, it's leg day, then that's Kill's Quads. <laughs> I, but we always, we don't skip leg day. Yeah. <laughs> kills, kills Quad. Kills Quad. Really. Jim jokes. Nobody no, cool. logged on here expecting Jim jokes. I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> and I see the same sweatshirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I am. I haven't worn this this one in a while on the stream. I wear it all the time. Oh, mine's in my life. That is super exciting. All right. I'm very excited to, gonna, to watch the Kills Squad. I want to watch. It's going to be fun. It's going to be. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Well. Let's do a recap. So uh, chat as a reminder, um, we're going to be away from chat during the gaming time around 10.30ish uh, p.m. Eastern time. We'll probably take a quick break and come and say hi. So without further ado, uh, Dr. B, do you have a recap for us? It's going to be interesting. Yes. Um, for the chat. Um, so usually I take very good notes about what we have done in these sessions, but last time we played on the 12th of October, uh, of August, I was so enraptured 
by what we were doing, I have multiple parts of my notes that end in mid-sentence. So I don't actually have good notes from last time. But here's what we're, I'm, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do my best to give a, a good, uh, good recap. So we approached our destination city of Havok in the Underdark. Bairdin and Enkai shapeshift into spiders to infiltrate the Underdark stronghold of Pavok. In the process, and with absolutely no intention of causing a zombie-like outbreak of mm. any kind, Emerald flings an ooze rat. Who? Dab me. <laughs> <laughs> Dab Merle. Emerald. Dab Merle. Since we have a, okay, so since we have a lot of new viewers in the chat, uh, what you need to understand is my character is actually named Emerald. Nobody believes me on that. You got what you're talking about. I don't buy it. Yeah, it's not familiar. <laughs> Deck of Wonder. Um, but the uh, Dabney flings an ooze rat at the city and does not intend the cause of zombie plague. Uh, but. Bairdin finds, uh, Bairdin and Enkai may find the lost blade of the Moonfang clan. And as soon as Bairdin touches it, he is transported into a vision where an epic battle with the great wolf spirit ensues. And Bairdin emerges as the avatar of the wolf spirit. Baron and Dabney Escort the, I don't know what, because I ended mid-sentence on that one. I, I was so excited what was going on. They, but they escorted something. We're escorts now. And, <laughs> Not those. And, and uh, the entire, the event, uh, uh, Enkai and Baradin make their way back out of the city. And a climactic scene ensues with the entire party at the edge of a cliff ready to do battle with an entire drow fortress. Mm -hmm. And we began the battle, and that is where we open today, in the midst of a heated battle with the entire party. That's right. That's Very well done. All right. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm piecing that together. Yeah. All right. So we're going to jump back into this. So let me go ahead and get our uh, battle music back on. Which was going to be this one, I believe. Oops, that's really loud, though. Turn that down a little bit. So, um, don't pay too much attention to the numbers by the turn order. It's in the right order. <laughs> I clicked through it a couple times, and it started changing the numbers around. I don't know what happened. So, just ignore the numbers. Initiative. Yeah, that sounds about yeah. right, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um... We ended with Dabney's turn. So you guys were coming down. The three buildings that are seen on screen there are the uh, places where you're rescuing the members of the Moonfang clan from. Uh, Gregnold had got into our... No, he wasn't raging yet, I don't believe. Was, I was he in a rage? No, because... was raging because I think I was too busy feeling my emotions. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you were, <laughs> you were trying to cast some spells. Was, yeah. Oh. You're casting spells. And this and, is like a big, big, like Heidi smoke thingy, isn't it? Yep. And so he has Dawn drawn, so we can see these circles of light. I, be, I believe everybody can see those. The big. Okay. Wow. So that's the light that Dawn's coming out. That 15 foot AOE circle that you're seeing is the darkness that was cast. Mm -hmm. And mm. Gragnold is stuck in. So the it is a magical darkness that does not allow for Dawn's light to shine within it, but it is coming outside of it, is, would be how I would imagine that. So right now, Enkai and Gragnold are in darkness. Uh, Dabney was able to come out and to start attacking someone. Uh, they're also one of the driders on their turn uh, picked up a horn and blasted some form of a warning or a signal of some kind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Bairdin is in Moonwolf form at this point inside of that area. Uh, yeah, and we have the stats for 
Do you need those stats for the moon wolf sent to you again? Nope, I actually just found it. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> so it should be tied to the blade. <laughs> it, it's, it doesn't think. list it off on the blade in d and Ah, okay. I'll I'll fix it. d d Beyond, not a sponsor, but something we frequently use. <laughs> Yeah. Or we they use are all the amazing. time. They are amazing. Yes, they are absolutely amazing. All right. Uh, so as a reminder, there were two warriors there. You guys did manage to kill the one that was in the darkness with you. Um, pulling off his arms, I believe. He had wrestled Dawn away from Gragnold, and Gragnold was able to catch Dawn back, in the even in the darkness, without seeing her. He knew. He knew where his sword was. Dabney had escaped his way out and was fighting another of the warriors. And that brings us back into things. I, so, I popped off his arm. Yes. And we just finished Dabney's turn, and now it is Zanra's no, turn. No, 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 definitely didn't do that. <laughs> definitely didn't do any cultural appropriation. That's no, terrible. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. So, Zanra so, comes forward towards this drider, trying to just make his day very, very bad. Uh, which she's going to hit with one. God, really? Uh, so she doesn't do very much damage. <laughs> That's number two. Okay. So you guys see her do it, doing her sword dance, coming around, slicing into it. The drider that's in front of her. Uh, oh, I believe that one is actually the one that got blinded as well. So she actually had a damage on that. So oh, yeah, because oh, the right. second, right. 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 I did, the I second did one hits. Right. I, yep. I did the I did the blinds. That's what I wrote. That's <laughs> yes, you, you use the moon you used your moon blade to do the blinding effect. Yep. Yeah. I was so excited that I stopped writing. I thought it was like a new window treatment. <laughs> so the fact that it is blinded, she's able to come in and under its defenses and do several points of damage to it, slicing around. Um, this was the one that was blow had been blowing the horn, so it's kind of distracted, but it has been able to get several blasts out as she fights into it. Uh, we come next to Bairden. What, is the, what are the walls of this hut made of? Uh, stone. Pretty much everything's made out of stone here. Is the guy that's this is the one that right, is right in front of me? Are they... Uh -huh by a doorway yes there's two doorways here you came in like sort of the back one and then there's one that kind of leads to like that central courtyardish area then how much bigger am i than this <laughs> he's medium sized you are large sized i don't think i can cool it through through a stone wall well you can try <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna cool it man through this <laughs> i want to i want to cool it man through the door like the head and the feet of the guy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> arms just like this so we get so yeah. yeah that is what i uh, I would like to do that. What's the check yeah. for Kool-Aid Man? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's a strength check. <laughs> but, so, to be clear, I want I want to tackle into this guy and blow him out the door. If that is right. Possible. Okay. Um, that sounds awesome. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's basically like a grapple. So go ahead and make um, a, it's a strength roll. So, yeah. What? Best dice ever! <laughs> Roll yeah! yeah whatever, you get it? So I saw that. All right, I'll pull from the deck. <laughs> Please tell me it says you push the person through a wall. That was yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah! If, if Jeff Jeff Hammer, we need... doesn't have that card. That Maybe needs to exist. Card. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Push somebody through the wall. Yep. Get a hilarious outline of, of yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, your attack begins to turn the tide of the battle. All hostile sentient creatures must make a DC 11 wisdom saving throw or be immediately become immediately friendly to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because, well, if I can't beat them, 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sweet. All right. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I would accept as a thing that might make more sense. Hold on, I'm getting technical notes. What? Oh, sorry. No, oh, Summer and River mess with it all the time. So, okay. All right, so it's a DC what again? DC 11 <laughs> wisdom saving. Okay, so let's see. We'll do the driders first. <laughs> Thank you, Demhammer, for the Eight, nine. That guy fails. <laughs> that one's a success. A uh, success. So now we're going to <clears throat> the mage. It's a plus one to wisdom. That's success. All right, the warrior guy. He's a success, and our priestess is also a success. So unfortunately, it's only one of the driders. Well, we have a drider. <laughs> I will accept if it makes more sense, man. Uh -huh. The drider could just be intimidated. Or... If you want to flavor that, a different yeah. Way. If you want I will, to I'm... weapons of worship, <laughs> that, that also would be fine. I am, I am a moon spirit right now. That's true. Um. <laughs> Uh, does this count as, do I do damage for this? Yes. Damage. Yeah, so since you're trying to grapple and uh, go through the wall, um, go ahead and do, this would be basically like your, just another, give me straight strength. Um, so what's your strength modifier for this? Plus four. Plus four. Um, I'm just going to do a roll for the building and just cool. see how... Classic how well the roll. yep well this is a construction role to see you know how solid they make things i rolled a six <laughs> so <laughs> it's gonna be so, the perfect shape of Bairden. <laughs> uh in this glowing <laughs> sl slightly building. glowing form of a wolf with these bright silver eyes you just start to growl and jump up onto this uh, drought that's in front of you smashing into him and the momentum just carries you both through the wall and coming smacking down right on top of him and go ahead and roll um, a d6 for me uh, two two uh, so we'll say he takes six points of bludgeoning damage from the fall Sweet. Um, and then uh, I guess that to add the extra flavor Bairdim will will um in addition to being on top of them kind of look over um and growl at all the growls that are all right so yeah you kind of crash through the wall you see a few drow around uh there were also several people who uh were inside there kind of standing up looking frightened but also excited you seem to have taken care of this guy for them um i am going to say because I can communicate help. Yes. Um, but only in common. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, I want to say to them, uh, run, get out of here. Uh, I guess I should say, run, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, make a persuasion check. Um, uh, that is a uh 18 18 so as you're mentally screaming this out to them looking over you do see a couple of dwarves that you recognize from the moonfang clan getting up and you see um a very battered looking uh female elf um looks like her one of her eyes is swollen shut from being beaten or something kind of limping and they're helping her up and they start making their way towards that the back entrance you came through at the end of everything you wanted to do I think so. I think that was a pretty good turn. All right, so it's the warrior's turn now. He's prone and underneath you, and not a happy fella. He he's definitely not happy with his situation here. So he's going to use half his movement to stand up, and he's going to go ahead and do two short sword attacks against you, which is going to be uh, nineteen. Uh, yeah, that's it. 
And I'm just going to roll the second attack, which will probably miss uh, with a nine. That does not hit. All right. Oh, gosh. So five points of piercing damage plus. Nine points of poison damage. <clears throat> Ow. Um, the other warrior's dead, so he can't do anything. And Kai. Um, okay, so even though it's dark, I can, can I move out of this, like over where Dabney is? Uh, you, can't, you don't know where Dabney You are disoriented right now. It is just, you can't see the hand in front of your face. You can see no light around you. Not even you might have the goggles or anything. Nope. No. This is no. magical no. darkness does not allow for anything right. to be seen. Can she hear Dabney? I uh, can make a perception to see what you can hear. Okay. You also have a, a very scantily clad red-headed dwarf standing in front of you. <laughs> but, which I can't see, apparently. Yeah, but we just may want to You know, know, like, you would know who is around you, but you just can't see that you have no... feeling around. He wants you to know that yeah. <laughs> I'm smelly. <laughs> <laughs> probably smell um, <laughs> um, My perception check was an eight. It's, uh, with everyone fighting and you hear, like, this crashing sound of the building coming down, swords clanging, you hear the brruh, brruh, brruh of the horn. It's okay. very disorienting to know where anything is right now. The darkness around you, it, it's... You can almost feel like the edges of panic kind of starting to ease in. Oh, great. Okay. Can um, I dispel magic? I mean, I can. I mean, can I dispel yeah. this magic? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I will cast dispel. Cool. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Solid move. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, you cast dispel magic, and it's still dark. Well, it's... Not where you but are, because now, now all of a sudden, like, ah, it, it's really bright, because Dawn's right there. <laughs> and then with my bonus action, since I can see now, I will throw a healing word over to um, uh, Baradin. What's his name? <laughs> all right, go ahead and roll that up. Which would be uh, five. All right. Baradin, you heal for five. Uh, you got to move anywhere, or stay right there? Um. I will move a little bit closer, like here. All right. The mage's turn. He is not too happy with how things are going. Seeing what's going on. Is that the mage up at the top? Uh, the mage is actually who you're next to. Yeah. That's oh, a priestess be, at the top, That's right? a priestess at the top, yeah. yep. Yeah, it's the mage next to you. Okay. So he's going to... Fight me. Mm. He's going to make a unarmed melee attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's... <laughs> make him do a projectile attack with arrows. Well, let's see. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. Okay. Really? <laughs> nope. <No. laughs> I was looking at his list to figure out what he was going to do. Uh, he vanishes. Oh, great. And you see him reappear on top of the building behind you. What? Uh, you see, as he's looking over next to you, not liking being a, a magic user being close to somebody who can do a lot of damage to him you basically see him push forward and this mist of, snaps around him and his form vanishes uh, looking around you do see it reappear not too far off on the building behind you up on the roof can, can i try i mean do i get a perception check or something to see if i can get him in an attack of opportunity yet? no misty step does not allow for attacks of opportunity that's dumb. Well, kind mostly because I don't want to. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so then, uh, what's the range on that? 
that's not a good question. Ten feet. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all kind of like, hold on. Uh, I, mm. He's going to stand, come over a belt, because he already cast a spell by rules and stuff. He can't really cast another one, but he can do a cantrip. So, uh, Erdin, go ahead and make a con save. Who? Erdin. Oh, Erdin. Is he still on the building? Yes, he's standing on top of the building. He walked okay. over to the edge. Hey, these dice are fickle, aren't they? Oh, no. Wait, take us. I rolled a one. <laughs> Ah, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a luck. I'm use a luck point. Okay. Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled a one. I rolled a two. <laughs> oh, a two. <laughs> right. So. Better than one. No, it's one hundred percent not worth my life. All right. Um, be happy. As he comes forward and his hand reaches out and you see this noxious gas come out, you're not able to back off in time. You take 12 points of poison damage. Ooh. Ooh. What was the happy part? What was I supposed to be happy? <laughs> uh, I didn't roll very well. That was 3d12. <sighs> That's very happy. Uh. <laughs> Ragnold. Thanks. Thank you for the heal, though, Rachel. <laughs> uh, yeah. So now the darkness is dispelled. I can see everybody. Yeah. How high up are the are the priestess and the mage? The priestess is on the ground. She uh, she's supposed to be. Uh, I'm gonna move. She's on the ground, but she's like under the eaves of the. She's just coming out of the door. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Okay. And then the yeah. other other mage is up on the roof. He's on the roof. Yeah. Gotcha. And he actually probably would have ended like going back onto like the peak of a roof right there. Sure. So then the the the. Warrior over there by full spirit, Verdon. Is he prone? No, he stood up. Okay, gotcha. Is, is that where we are, Megan, or did we move further, further? I would have said, like, you crashed. I can't really, I mean, like, you're on top of him almost essentially, but I'm just having you back there to make it so we can see everything. Um, well, I'm going to use my bonus action to uh, activate my rage. Rage. I'm going to run <laughs> straight. Um, at the priest. All right. So right up here. Oh, that's all right. Too close. Hold on. Wait for it. There you go. Um, and then okay. with my with my rage, I am going to attack with dawn. Okay, go for it. Let's come on, lucky dice. That is the critical fail. Oh. <laughs> all right, pull from the deck. Well, I was really excited to use it when I don't roll a one. This is uh, yeah. Jim Hammer and Sons Deck of Sunders. Thanks, Jim Hammer. For critical. It's exciting. Hopefully, it's going to be an attack. Here's a line from a Tom Waits song. The, the large print giveth and the small print taketh away. <laughs> Dr. B, tell me when to stop. Stop right there. <clears throat> You flail wildly, <laughs> um, leaving you open for attack. You suffer a penalty to your armor class equal to your dex minus. That's some half. <laughs> um, my dex modifier is zero. Oh, okay. So, Good. yep. So you're just flailing. <laughs> just flailing until the start of my next turn. This is all totally, right. This is picture perfect. You can watch. Yes. <laughs> this is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look like one of those uh, one of those things in front of uh, like a car dealership. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right there. Whoa. <laughs> and hopefully that's distracting enough that I can still make a second attack. Yep. Go for it. Yes. <laughs> that's a natural twenty. Whoa! Oh! Yeah, See, whole... Jim Hammer take it, and now it gives it. This is like Dragon yes. Master style. Yeah. He's got off the guard, and then Dragon <laughs> comes back with an axe to the face. See what happens when you sass? You get axe to the face. <laughs> Give him the sass, you get the axe. <laughs> Guys, I know it's for the king, but don't go towards the dragon. Yeah. 
Your attack is truly vicious. Roll each die of your attack twice, add the result. Well, so that's standard. Yeah, okay, that's just a, okay. That's all right. Regular, that's a regular critical. Oh. That's sort of a regular critical. Here's what I'll say because we do, we are using the Jeb Hammer. Uh, add an extra dice to your roll. So normally it's 1d10. In this case, I'm going to make it 3d10. That's yep. a attack. All right. Nice. That is two. Not happy with me. That's three. Uh, that's <laughs> 10 plus nine, 19 damage. 19, nice. Damage. Yeah, okay. So coming forward with that first swing with Dawn, you're just kind of wide, and the priest is kind of looking at you like, what? And then it's, uh, and it's like, you have this little glint in your eye, like, I meant to do that. And you just come down viciously, st just striking right at her neck. All right. That's my new, that's my new move. <laughs> So it brings us to the Drider's turns. The one that's our friend now? Randy. Um, <laughs> the one that had been blowing the horn stops blowing the horn and uh, says something. Um, Aaron, you're the only one who understands it. As it, it says, I feel the tides are turning against us. I will help you. Please. I can't see, though. Okay. <laughs> So it's not the one that's right near me, is it? No, it's the one over by Zadra. Um, oh, and, no. <laughs> she doesn't speak under common. She does, yeah. Um, Dabney, for the blinded effect, does he get to make a save at the end of his roll for that? You know what? You made that, I think you created that item, so... No, that's it's a standard item. Moonblades. Yeah. I gotta use those more. Uh, DC 15. <laughs> DC 15. Oh, okay. It's, it's um, ridiculous how many rolls this thing has. <laughs> uh, uh, what type? Con, con uh, just fails, so it's still blind. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> this other young one is coming right up next to you, Baron. Hi. <laughs> All righty. Baron, big, big shoe. It's going to <laughs> I just gotta check something okay he is in darkness so uh, that's going to be a 21 to hit uh, yeah I'm pretty sure that hits alrighty uh, so that's gonna be uh, six slicing damage and uh, there's another attack with that oh which is gonna probably fail as a t with a 10 uh, definitely fail. Uh, and then you see, as it comes down with that second one there where it misses, it's actually following with its mouth as it goes to bite at you. Pull from the uh, natural one deck for me, please. Hey! Hey! hey. <laughs> I, need, I need a blunder for our drider friend there. Hey. I'm afraid, my friend, I don't taste very good. <laughs> Oh, I get to punish. Okay. Hey, Adam, where am I? Go ahead and hurt them, Hammer. They suffer a negative three penalty for their next damage roll. Okay. I will. Not the most outlandish, but useful. Not too bad. Useful. Useful. It's, the text says, <laughs> okay, let's not get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> and so what you guys see is out of this last building another drider comes out oh, and no. Dabney onto Dabney's head <laughs> alright 16 nope uh, so that's going to be a 17 nope getting warmer 20 Maybe. <laughs> I, mean, I guess so. It's not not a hit. <laughs> uh, well, it's not bad. It's four points of piercing damage. Oh, okay. no, sorry. Four points. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, four points of slashing damage. Sorry. Okay. For that. All right. That ends the Drider's turns. Baron. 
All right. So what I will do is for my bonus action here, I'm going to go ahead and cast Hunt. All right. Okay. Hi, I'm learning. There's my Make sure I'm off. Okay, so obviously I'm casting on. Exactly. I am a quick long sword. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, first I know. one is an 18. Uh, 18 does not hit, unfortunately. Ooh, what? And the 13 is not going to hit either. Yeah, so coming forward, trying to slice into this, it's like right on top of you, and it's flailing around the dark. You can see with the night vision goggles, but it's a little bit disorienting. Okay. Having this thing, and also having some bright light fairly close, it's just kind of throwing you off a little bit. Okay. All right, any movement or anything? Uh, even though it's an AoE, I think I have a pretty decent deck, so I'm going to try to dash over to the blind one. Okay. Oh. So, all right, that guy will take an attack of opportunity, uh, which is going to be a 19. And that's going to be a hit. Well, I rolled another one for the damage dice, so four points of pier slash yes. piercing damage. Slashing, slashing, sorry, four slashing. Four, you said? Uh, four, yep. Okay. Do you want me to move you? Uh, yes, please. As far as I can run, no be 30. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. There, that keeps you within the light, too. Hmm. Nice. All right. This is the priestess's turn. Ow! Right. So, she's not too happy. I think... Yep, that's what's going to happen here. Hold on a moment. 5, 10, 15. I'm worried about the dryness. Oh, that's... You were in there living up to their full potential. I, I believe they are failing as drought. Mm. Mm. All right. Ragnold, Dabney, and Kai. What's up? Something happened. She, you see the priestess before you kind of look and pull her hands back and start casting this spell. And suddenly all around you guys, there's this bzz, 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 as all of these insects come in and start biting and piercing against each of you. I need you each to Not make a, a constitution saving throw. A constitution save? Not yep. dex? <laughs> constitution save. Man. 16. You get your number. All right, save. <laughs> Bugs, not a fan. I got a 15. <laughs> save. How about a nat 20? Whoa. Okay. That's a save. All right. All right, so. I need more D10s. Uh, thus far, the singing dice have treated me well yeah. when they're not caught. Yeah. I feel like I need some more D10s is a bad thing to hear your game master say. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> So, 15, no, you don't need more dice. 20, you need less dice. 20, 20, yeah. 29. <clears throat> 14 points of piercing damage to each of you. What? Wait, what? But we saved. 14. You did. You would have taken 29 points of piercing damage had you not. Uh, this oh, is <laughs> That's a okay. Grumble, grumble. Rage. 14 <laughs> points. <laughs> My own patoot. <laughs> And I do believe that's a concentration. Yes, it is. All right. Oops. What am I trying to do? There we go. A little dot on her is for concentration. All right. Oh, wait. She has the mark on her, too. She was blinded as well. So what you're saying is it doesn't hit. No, no, no. Uh, she makes... What's the save again? Is it con? Yeah. against the blindness and what's the dc on it uh, uh lower than you rolled i mean higher than you rolled uh-huh <laughs> 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 uh, no she actually 
She did. And as I say, at the end of their turn, start, where does, what's the word, uh, wording for that? Look that up. There's a lot of rules for this. Um, each creature, the, 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 and the end of each of its turns. Okay. So, I apologize. That did not happen then. Because she can't oh, see. Oh, so Megan, been able to... you are forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> all 14 so, hit points. All 14 hit points come back. So let's see. She would have done. She would have okay, easy enough. 14 more hit points. <laughs> yeah. So instead, she touches her face and dispels the magic oh. yeah. to get rid of the blindness. Okay. And then gives us hit points. <laughs> That's and she's going to <laughs> what run away Move back there run away. she doesn't want to be in the light are you kidding me <laughs> all right dabney so does the light actually is the light um of giving them disadva any disadvantage on rolls it should have been yes. I okay. my I should have done that for the dra or for the drider attacking you. I apologize. I had. Is it only in the bright light or is it in all? The it's in I believe just in the bright light. Okay. Cool. Yes. Okay. So, um, and uh, do I get advantage for being next to you while you're raging? Uh, just in general. Okay. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Uh. Sunlight. Yeah, it's in the sunlight. So it would be the first, the first circle of of Gragnold's light. Cool. Okay, I will. I'm about to stomp a spider underfoot by Gragnold's bright light. Okay. Okay, so I get advantage on my first attack with the moon blade of the House of Takeshi. Yeah, Takeshi it up. Okay, no, that's that's reasonable. That's reasonable. It, that's a twenty-six to hit. Yeah, uh, that hits. Yeah, no, or and that's an eighteen on the. So okay, so it's a twenty-six on my first hit. Um, mm -hmm. want me to roll damage now? Uh, you can roll up all three attacks okay. first. And then my with my second attack with the house of the blade of Takeshi, that is not a good one. Glad I got advantage, and I'm that glad I had advantage because that one's gonna whiff because that was only like an eleven. Yeah, that doesn't hit. Okay. <laughs> but with the first swing, and it's just coming down right into one of its eight eyes. Mm -hmm. One of those eight eyes is going to get pierced. Oh, wow. It's going to get pierced for Osnid. <laughs> it is going to, wow. It is going to get pierced for, uh, huh, huh, for 11 piercing damage and three radiant damage. Nice. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Mm. Right. And now I am going to spend a key point for Flurry of Blows. And okay. And my next trick. <laughs> okay, and let's see if I can do better than that. I got a nat 20 on my first punch to it. Uh, guess what? Nice. I'm about to do blinding again, like this. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, no, it'd be exactly. It'd be like, yeah, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> and that's exactly what we do. Just come around with with four on each hand and <laughs> throw the sword in the air and then poke it in the air. No, that's an acrobatics check. I don't want to mess with that. Let's keep it simple. Some sweet sundering. Oh my goodness. Okay. If your let's see, if my attack deals force damage, my target is pushed their full movement in a line away from me. If they are stopped by a solid object, they take one additional force damage for each five feet their movement was impaired, uh, impeded. Otherwise, draw out a card. So no force damage. So I'm gonna draw another no card. No force damage, yep. Okay. <laughs> Man. One of my groups, we had to draw like six cards because we kept getting force, radiant force, something. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my attack is truly vicious. Roll each of my attack dice twice and add the results. We just got that one. 
Yeah, well, there's multiple of that one. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so I'll so say again. I'll do the same thing for Gradle. Three. You can add three. Yep. Okay, so three. All right. Uh, okay, and I'm a, and is my bonus going to triple? No, it's just a dice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I tried to be a generous. Yeah. Generous okay, player. well, that was 17 damage. Nice. That includes the gauntlet of the one true Dabney. <gasps> I love that. And That's finally, for the la for my last attack. Oh, thank God for advantage. Thank God for advantage. That's a 19 to hit. That will hit. <laughs> and so I take the I take the four fingers in the eyes and just rake them down. <laughs> it's really squiggling them. Squiggling for 12 more damage. 12 yeah. more damage. <laughs> like a uh, yeah, I'm going nice. to that. Uh, I'm going Rachmaninoff yeah. on the spider's eye. Yeah. <laughs> so like coming and slicing a couple of times with the sword and just feeling like, no, this isn't personal enough. I need to get up in there. And just gah, gah, gah. <laughs> I want to see hitting it, it and it's kind of roaring back. You see that it's large fangs it's in its mouth. It, it's remember? like looking kind of sickly being in the light as well. All right. Okay. Well, do you remember, do you remember like the Looney Tunes cartoons where Bugs Bunny would get Daphne to play that tune on the xylophone? Do, 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 Yeah, that's what I'm doing on the eyes. Yeah. No, yeah. All right. As that turns ending, I'm calling this the start of the top of the rounds. This is where we started. You guys start to hear different horn blasts echoing throughout the city uh, in a similar vein to the horn blast that was sounded by the drider uh, in this group. Um, it would seem that our combat is no longer private and intimate. Zadra, kind of being a bit confused by this guy. That's fair, I guess. <laughs> 30, she's gonna actually come forward and uh, you see her go into the room um, and in common calling out like, hurry, run, we've got to escape. <sighs> and she spends her turn trying, it's sounding like trying to get people up, get people moving in that far uh, house there. So she's not on the roof, she's inside, but that's where she is on the map. All right, Bairden. Are the roofs also made of stone? Um, yeah, I mean, there's like wood and stuff isn't found in the Underdark. <laughs> just making sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like, um, more like a thin, thinner shingles and stuff. It, it's not like heavy roofing materials, but yes, it is stone on the roof as well. All right, all right. These definitely are not well made buildings. Like having been around dwarven construction, even though the Moonfang clan did not grow up around dwarves, is just they knew how to make a building. These things are flimsy. Um, actually, I was trying to decide if it would be worthwhile for me to try to tear the roof out from under the wizard. <laughs> maybe, that seems maybe a little much to <laughs> so, You're going to tear the roof off that mother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tear the roof off, you going to tear the? Yeah. <laughs> that seems a little much that seems a little much to ask <laughs> unless you think that is possible with I all, mean, all things are possible <laughs> you it theoretically could probably jump up onto the roof whether or not it would hold your weight but also keep in mind there's probably prisoners in there as well oh that's true okay no, no, no I'm right uh, I'm going to totally. Um, I want to. I would love to scooch around to be on like the other side, like over here, if that's okay. Sure. Um, and uh, kind and of totally bowl just, him over. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm, just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna scooch sideways in a like really unnerving way that a wolf would never do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of push gonna, into I'm him. Gonna circle gonna... strafe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sachet, sachet. sachet. <laughs> it's very dressage um, I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna bite him. Okay, <laughs> go for it. 
you better work. And you get an advantage because you're next to Gragnold. Oh, sweet. Nice. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is this? Plus six. So 23. Yeah, that might hit. <laughs> cool. I've, I've got two attacks. I'm going to roll the second one. Like, All right, go for it. 17. 17 does not hit. Okay. You rolled uh, that with advantage, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I only got 11. So. Um, and that's 9. Um, uh, that's 13 damage. Do I get to add the extra 1d6 radiant as well? Yeah, you get that. That's yeah, that's like once per turn kind of thing. Okay, cool. Uh, so then uh, 14 damage, one one of which is radiant. And then he makes okay. a DC 14 strength saving throw or not. Oh, okay. Uh, 15. 12 plus stuff. Uh, a strength save? Uh, 13? Uh, yeah, DC 14. So Okay, so he's prone. So I'm going to say uh, Bairdin, like, like does, does his fancy step. Around. Okay. And then he does like a and then, and then he goes for a leg. Like, okay. Leg out from gotcha. <laughs> All right. I got that little black smudgy thing on there to indicate that he is prone. All right. Anything else on your turn? Nope. That should be good. All right. I was like, too, as you're oh, looking well, actually, into. I wanna, uh, I'm sorry. I okay. want to use a bonus action to heal. Okay. Go for it. Uh, looking into that building, you see um, in here, uh, it looks like more men are in this one. Uh, so you see several, again, a, a few of the dwarves that you would recognize. Uh, you also see um, possibly an elven male uh, and a rather large human male in here. All right. Brings it to the warrior's turn. He again will use half of his movement to stand up. <laughs> Because that's a thing he has to keep doing. Well, if he and was he's, down, this wouldn't be yeah, a problem. It be I know. <laughs> it's just, God. So he's going to attack you twice. And he's at disadvantage with his attacks because he's in light. Oh, I rolled two 15s, though. So, ha. Huh? So 22. Yeah, that, you laugh at your player's pain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that's nine points of piercing damage. Oh. And. Oh, sorry. Ten points of poison damage. And once more, he's going to swipe at you, not being happy. Uh, so 21. That will also hit. All right. So. Six plus four. Uh, so that's seven points of piercing damage plus six, nine points of poison damage. Ow. All right. That was a whole lot. <laughs> that was a whole lot. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These guys aren't a joke. <laughs> um, and uh, you do see him kind of looking up and looking around at the sounds coming from the city as well, but more focused on you because you've been taking chunks out of him. And Kai. Okay, so the point is to get the people out of the buildings, right? And like escape, right? Is that what we're trying to do here? In theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I feel mean, like yeah. more people yeah, are more coming. Oriented. Okay, uh, I, I do, honestly. I, I uh, mean, theoretically, there's an entire city full of drow that we could- Right. Right. I heard target rich environment. That's okay. <laughs> I am going to move over here and then say, well, uh, did the people escape from this first building? Did we see them? You, like, as like, you come over, you do see a small string of people coming out of the back. Uh, they're, yeah, they're not moving incredibly fast. Like some of them maybe had to uh, release spawns or something, but they, they are up and seeming to, to come out. So I'm going to come over here and be like, guys, come on, we got to get out of here. And then I'm going to reach into my bag and I'm going to pull out a pink totem and throw it on the ground. All right. And then we're going to see Sparkles majestically make it. Yes, yeah, Sparkles! <laughs> yeah, Sparkles! And then I'm going to um, put my hand on Baradin's back and uh, do, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to do Healing Word. 
All right. Oh no, I'm gonna do cure wounds. That's more powerful. He seems to be hurt. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So we have a sparkles. I don't know if Sven's Sven's probably busy, so I'll try to throw it up. We all heal when sparkles is around. So yes, I'm healing Baradin for twenty three. Those were some good. Oh. And then everybody gets plus five. Everybody gets, and so does Baradin. Everyone gets an additional plus five. Nice. Full health. (laughs) <laughs> five health five health yeah I just got hit with 20 so you That's get 20, 20. Yeah. 20. <laughs> yeah those were good rolls yeah Thank yeah you. they were it was my strongest you, yeah that is amazing oh I forgot I had these icons huh <laughs> sparkles Sorry, I'm trying to find a little something that I, I have a mix of icons on here some of them are Okay to use, and some of them are not. <laughs> All right, for right now, Sparkles is going to be a thumbtack. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, sparkles. <laughs> we'll put it, I guess, there. So it's Sparkles. Yeah. That is actually the hat that Sparkles wears. Oh yes. my god, yes. I, I he would it. totally yes. wear a top hat for sure. A blue top hat. Blue <laughs> I'm All right. right. I thought that was a vicious attack. God. Oh, oh. Uh, I, it was, <laughs> listen, it was a stretch. I know. <laughs> oh dear. I think we just didn't get the point. <laughs> you know, we need to stop. We should stick a pin in this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. I'm sorry, guys. I gotta play these characters the way they're gonna do what they're gonna do. Wait, what? Then we uh, all died. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Uh, what? Wait, five, ten, fifteen. Let 20, the record show. Hold on. And Kai said we have to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, the mage standing on the roof. Oh no! Oh no! We shouldn't have clustered together. Looks no. at you all, <laughs> like, yeah. and he starts. <laughs> calling out something and you see his hands blurring around uh i need all of you guys to um co- make a constitution saving throw oh, everybody? that was bad. all the way over here all the oh sorry i did i not make the i didn't make it on the right layer sorry everybody in the circle there uh which does include bad guys so Mine was a seven. Okay, so failure? Yeah. I got a nat 20. Nat 20 will succeed. Uh, You got a 12. It's a failure. Dabney? We're good. Failure. (laughs) Nice! Team the Drider saves and the Warrior will fail. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So... I hope it's bugs. Fireballs. <laughs> no, fireball was five. <clears throat> What's a fireball? You could just bring your water. <laughs> but, but I'm just splash of water. Yeah, and our little cube of water. Yeah, the cube of water. Cube of water is boom. I can do water. Why am I Hold not on a second. Offensively in battle, just to distract people. I'll bet that stone roof is. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to start with the good news of what just happened <laughs> for you guys. Uh huh. Um, hold on, I got to move this out of the way. So, uh, as this noxious cloud forms, oh, you gosh. see the warrior that you guys were fighting fall dead. Well, that's good. Oh. Everybody uh-huh. who failed. Uh, 30 points of poison damage. Oh. What? Oh, boy. Oh, I, I should have advantage against poison, don't I? You do? Uh, yes, as a dwarf, you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, there's that. That's a 24. <laughs> yep, so that's half damage then, which is then... Halved. No, it's not halved again, right? Because of your totems? Uh, well, uh, dwarves no, get no, because you don't have bear, yeah. I have so, two uh, those who succeeded, it's 15 points of damage. 
as he uses up one of his fifth levels. 15 points of poison. Oof. All right, that's his turn. Um, it should be halved by, I thought dwarves got, uh, that was halved. Don't they get resistance to poison? 15 is, re is half. So he succeeded on the save. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought they and now it's Gragnold's turn. I don't remember. I'm going to take uh, it. Yeah. Run away, run away, run away. Um, wait. Question. I have a question. <laughs> yes, What yes. kind of damage was that? Poison. Oh, poison. Okay. Yep. All right, go on. Yes, the, the spell was cloud kill. Not acid. That's different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, this is cloud it kill. kill. Cloud kill. It did it kill. Killed yeah. It killed the other guy. So it's not false advertising. It's not false advertising. <laughs> it not is cloud not. Main. <laughs> or cloud hurt. <laughs> yeah. Sting, cloud, cloud sting. Cloud sting. Cloud cough. <laughs> cloud <All asthma>. right. <laughs> Gragnold. Uh, just a question. Um, Sparkles mm -hmm. is uh, corporeal. Are you going to try to ride is... Sparkles? <laughs> um, I, I think it's incorporeal. Sparkles is a, is a magically summoned spirit. Hmm. So does that mean I can ride? <laughs> I don't know. I want the redheaded raging dwarf. To Tell ride. me what you're trying to do here, Gragnold. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what I'd like to do is, is slap it on the backside and then hop up on right, and, and hop right on the back of Sparkles at the... There was one guy that was running away. You were running, no! you were running after him? The, the priestess you ran away? Yeah, she was my target. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to ride Sparkles. Will let me if Sparkles even I will say like you could vault over Sparkles majestically. Yeah, but yeah, it's got to stay because the guy has to move it as a bonus action. So, so I can just vault over its partially corporeal body. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's like you it's believe like that it is there so much in your rage <laughs> that for a moment the air is actually solid enough to give you momentum to jump over it. <laughs> Love nice. That. Love that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going. I don't know if I can actually make it that far without Sparkles' help. Uh, you are starting your turn inside of the cloud kill, so I need you to make another constitution saving throw. Whoa, it keeps hurting. Are you kidding me? I think it's going to actually much worse. Me. I'm going to die. The, the uh, first time on the turn starts there, or if a creature, uh, the first time you enter, and then on the start of their turn in that area. 20, that 22. That saves. And so it's half damage. Um, Eight again. I might. When, so 26 half down to 13. Okay. Not great. Um, uh, so I definitely want to get out of this cloud. Uh, yes. You know. <laughs> um, um, can I tell that my teammates around me are, are uh, Getting her better. About to die. Um. Oops. Sorry. I just moved in. Kai. Uh. I mean, you're in a rage. Uh, these are the people who attacked your village. Took took away your livelihood. Took away er everything from you. I. I don't know how much Gragnold would be in touch with what's going on around him. Then I'm not even going to run out of it. I'm going to just attack the Grider next to uh, Bearden. Not Bearden next to. Uh, Dabney. Dabney. Yeah. All right. Go for it. If that's how we're playing this, then I'm just going to attack him. Full on rage. Well, I, and he could he could decide to leave the cloud. I mean, I think that would be reasonable to go after the priestess as well, but... I think if I knew enough to leave the cloud, I think I would know enough to bring my friends out. So I'm going to go ahead and attack this guy. All if right, I'm, go for it. I respect your commitment. Uh, and you, get a, you do have advantage, cause, right, because of pack tactics and everything. Yep, because I have pack tactics. That's amazing, because I just got a critical fail. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's much better. Um, 25 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Um, awesome. I'm going to go ahead and make my three attacks all at the same time on that guy. Um, this one is also, um, that is a 27 to hit. That hits. My third attack is uh, either a 24 or a 24. So 24 will hit. Great. Which one? 
<laughs> the, the first one, yeah. Mm. Cool. So that is uh, that's the wrong guy. Hold on, Let's grab the right one. Uh, four plus five plus six. So that's fifteen plus fourteen plus five. Fifteen plus fourteen plus five. Anybody? Fifteen plus thirty-three. No, thirty-four. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Oh yeah. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Total. Damage. Nice. Yes. Let's. So it's brutal. Gragnold in a is coughing and like the his eyes are bloodshot already because he's mm-hmm. raging. Um. So he's right now he's been using Don two handed. He grabs the um the other scimitar out there and just spinning blades trying to figure out and. Where at this point, too, um, you do hear a voice in your head being like, careful, Gragnall, don't lose your focus. And Dawn's going to go ahead and cast, I think she has, it was a Cure Wounds. A Lesser Restoration. Lesser Restoration on you. Uh... <laughs> Thanks, Dawn. <laughs> so, it's so the Drider's turn. Die. Drider. It might just die. <laughs> do it. Ah, the drider. Da, da, da. It's con. It's oh, it actually has a good couple. All right, so it's going to take half damage from that. Then fifteen. Really? Wow. Fifteen. This is nine points of damage to that guy just from the poison. Nineteen damage from the poison. Uh nine. He say it saved. Okay. So just gonna do one other thing for this drider here. Yeah, it's gonna go ahead and do all three attacks against Gragnold. Uh at disadvantage because it is in the bright light. Uh, let's see. So that is going to be. Waggy waving and play the water flag. That's the that's the Gregnold way. That's the Gregnold way. Does eighteen hit Gregnold? Yes, it does. All right. Uh, I'm assuming a nine does not. Nine does not. And then twelve. Twelve does not hit. All right, Not so that will just be one. Only one hit against you. Five plus three, so eight points of slashing damage to you. Make it four. Yes. So does the spider, does the drider die? It's not looking good. It's, you can see, like, the light is damage. it seems to be damaging it. It looks sickly to begin with, and at, it's attacking. Uh, looking at it, you did see it kind of looked up at the mage and it looked around, like, you saw this fleeting moment of it trying to, thinking about fleeing, and just decided to stay where it was. The other one that's blind... Still doesn't make it safe. <laughs> and is still standing there in undercom and be like, oh, what? okay, something's going on. I, I don't know what it is. We need to, I think I I don't want to, I can't see anyway, but I don't know how to see what's coming. <laughs> there's, there's something really bad happening. Oh my gosh, <sighs> Jack, ride the drider. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The last one <laughs> does not want to get back into the light, so it is going to make uh, attacks against Baron. Uh, so it can so fifteen. Uh, fifteen exactly hits. Okay, I'm just gonna roll the other two attacks just to save some time. Uh, that's gonna miss with a thirteen. Oh, and that will hit with a twenty-three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are yep. Yeah. Okay, eight, 15 points of damage plus piercing damage plus five points of poison damage. You still standing, Jack? Oh yeah, I'm still standing. 
Those two attacks were literally the first time that Baron has ever taken damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first blood! <laughs> oh, yes. All right. And uh, uh, now it's your turn. <laughs> uh, well, and you do have Hunter's Mark cast against that dude. Uh, yeah, I'm going to kind of dispel on that. And I'm going to actually use my movement to run around so I can get line of sight on the priestess who's attempting to get away. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to fire off two arrows, both radiant. Okay, go for it. The one who's casting the cloud of death. No, it's a wizard. Yeah, it's the, that's the mage. Well, you probably would have had to move over to here to get line of sight on her. Hey, 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 Baron. Yeah. Could uh, could I make a tactical suggestion? Meta gaming. I, uh, I I appreciate your tactical, but I uh, I have already made my choice, sir. That is fair. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so uh, one is a twenty-five, the other is a twenty-six. Those both hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Sorry there. And radiant is twenty three total. Twenty three. <clears throat> With that, she's not looking good. You good. slam the first arrow into her back and, and she kind of stumbles for a moment. The second one hits and she looks back at you and you just see like this anger in her eyes. As you all are hearing this, you're hearing more and more horns blaring off in the distance. And just... And... There's this wave that hits most of you um for those of you the four in the cloud it's kind of hard to note it well so baron <laughs> you're the only one able to notice this oh boy a smell of rot just washes over you you see brat that was rot <laughs> not october fest no. rot, rot. <laughs> here I mean, looking a Something draws your attention up. And you see from above things starting to fall down. And you do see this swarm of rats climbing up the wall and starting to swarm around this mage. Uh, God, it was that rat, Dabney. <laughs> <laughs> I remember saying to you all, I did not mean I to. wasn't there. <laughs> I was just flinging the rat away. I wasn't there. Ankai and Baradin were not there. <laughs> All right. So you do, like, these rats start to swarm around him. It's actually really good. For who? Well, well, for the rats. Um, he is able to maintain concentration on the cloud kill, though. But you do see, like, there's these rats with this light purplish glow starting to swarm over him. Oh, we uh, need to here so fast. You just the priestess continues to run off and going in towards the city. Uh, she's angry, but she's taking off right now. Uh, Dabney, go ahead and make a constitution saving throw for me. So knowing that I need to stay in the fight for this, I've been sitting on this for a good occasion, knowing that I need to be here for my friends oh, no. and to save every, what do you mean, oh no, <laughs> I'm having a dramatic moment. <laughs> I am using my inspiration point Whoa. Okay. to keep my constitution safe. Yeah, that was not right. <laughs> okay. I am, but I am using my inspiration that I've been sitting on for like a year. Yeah, you have been sitting on that for a while. <laughs> And I didn't need to do that because I got a nat 20. All right. 
I got a nat 19 on that second oh, one. You breathe really cool. in the clouds. Whoa! <laughs> you breathe, suck it the whole thing and spit it in <sighs> Strength is all right, here's what I'm going to do because you got a nat 20 and you did use your inspiration finally. What's that? I will let you, I'm going to let you quarter the damage. I am being nice here with that, but you got a nat 20 and you used up an inspiration you've been sitting on for a while. Um, so 18, 23, 28, 14. So down to seven points of poison damage. I'm going. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> no, you only take six, six seven. Okay, but here's an interesting here's an interesting question for you, Megan. Yep. If I use, um, would it be a reasonable use of the fist of unbroken air to move gaseous material away? Yeah, a hundred percent. This is actually acting like a gas, and you do see it is starting to dissipate among uh, around the ground a bit. Okay, so I could blow it maybe towards the priest. <laughs> There are, the the there are people in the building. There are people in the building he's standing on. So I could, but I'm not going to yeah. because I'm. You not could. Busy. You <laughs> certainly could. <laughs> I, but I do see a drider down in the lower right hand part of the screen. Yep. Well. Yeah, and you don't know what he's been saying. <laughs> Wait, is it okay? Isn't, isn't this one? The yeah, the, one? the one over there is the blind one. Yeah. Oh, you still okay. have a drider that's up, like right next to you. Yeah, no, that no, that's I'm below. Yeah, I know, but I, I've got a cloud that's gonna kill me. Um, yeah, and the rest of us. So I'm gonna use fist of unbroken air, and okay. I'm going to blow it towards that other dry, the drider on the bottom part of the screen. Alrighty. Cat using two both. Yeah, using my key points, two of them. So, concentrating, definitely not stealing from Dragon Ball Z. Getting the command, I mean, key going, and then ooh, a fist of unbroken air. All right. Yeah, I punched that gas too. so hard. All right. I so stand by that. You're punching the gas so hard. <laughs> so hard. Um, all right. And it moves objects 10 feet? Uh, no. If it does not make, if they don't make their strength save, I believe it moves objects more, considerably more than that. One second here. It moves objects 20 feet away. 20 feet. So that, I, it, it's a cloud. It doesn't have strength. I think, I think you wanted to go down to this one. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'll, oh, I'll oh, go you're going down, down to that one. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. Away from all the buildings. Okay. Uh, would that be able to move? It's not quite able to get all the way, but you are able, I'll say like with just using that key point and just the, circling it around, you are able to push the gas away. Right. Um, so it, there's still a little bit that's kind of in the air. You guys are all coughing. Um, it, it's this burning sensation in your lungs. It's hard hard to breathe, but uh, you are no longer actively being poisoned. There we go. Thank God. <laughs> no, no. Thank Dabney. Thank God. <laughs> All right. Anything Thank else on your turn, Dabney? Dabney. <laughs> well, that's my turn. <laughs> All right, that's your turn. So Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me think. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, we need to get out of here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I move away, I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, you s the building that Zonor's in, she's been clearing people out of that one. She saw the uh, cloud coming out. She's going to go ahead and do two attacks against that rider there. Uh, 13 plus uh, two. Yep, that will hit. And that those will both hit. Uh, 15. Jeez. Okay. It's just barely standing. Um, she is going to move in and move past towards this door here to try and get everybody else out. The drider is going to make an attack against her. Uh, which oh, will fail because activate? it has the dis disadvantage. Yeah. If a target makes an attack uh, of opportunity against somebody who is next to me, I get to make a free attack. All right, go for it. Sentinel. 
Well, that's fine. <laughs> that misses, unfortunately. Do you, get advantage for, do you get advantage for being? Did you like, do your advantage? Yeah. Person? Oh, I am. I mean, next, for uh, next to yeah, you. you are. That's a four. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good try. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Greg. <laughs> I mean, yeah. all right. That's sad. what you guys see in this moment. Uh, as the the mage starts, they see the uh, cloud dissipate. The mage drops their concentration on it, so it actually goes away. But at this point, uh, Zonor's running in. The larger human male has freed several of the people around, uh, getting the different prisoners out. Uh, you see them all off to the side there. There is uh, just a little over, tw I think they're, hold on. <clears throat> 20, you see all in all 24 people, but as you look over, as this cloud has gone away and you all are breathing and finally getting the gasps of air coming in, you're again hearing more and more and more of these horn blasts happening throughout the city. And you hear this frantic edge to them. As you do see at this point, the mage turns his attention away from you all, looking back out towards this, over the city. And you guys look that way too. And what you see off in the distance, there's this soft light starting to glow. And it looks like, um, I don't know if any of you would recognize this spell, but you do see like there, there's this strange like greenish uh, glow that's appearing around all of these humanoid type shapes. And you see these large kind of mounding giants lifting up this one creature with tentacles coming off of its face crackling purplish black energy flowing around it as you see masses of undead starting to swarm into the city. I didn't do that. <laughs> Did anybody get the feeling like we might have created a bigger problem <laughs> than we originally have? I did not do this. <laughs> it's like in uh, Halo 3 where like all the all, all, all the all the brutes and everybody get taken over by the flood, and you're like, thank God I don't have to deal with those guys. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we will take a quick pause there oh, as the city is suddenly brought under attack by an army of undead. You do hear Zadra come out of the building, looking around frantically, pointing off. You do see that there is one cavern exit. Just like, and points you all towards that as the party and the prisoners start making their way towards this one cavern. Mm, and we'll explain what happens next after our quick bio break and saying oh, hi to chat. Oh, God. How's everybody doing with oh, health? Oh my gosh. Not, not great. Good. No, <laughs> not great. I'm 67 out of 92. Okay, so you're both great. half? We didn't ask your age, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Who's above half? I'm above I have half. 29 I'm hit points. Okay. I, I got a lot of healing. So. Yeah. <laughs> Is uh, Greg Nild above half? Uh, uh, just barely. Greg Nild's basically okay. Half. okay, so that's three. Good to know. Oh. So, hi guys. Hi, chat. I'll be right back. <laughs> How y'all doing? So yeah, yeah. That, there's some stuff happening. Apparently we're gonna, apparently we're gonna fight some zombies. Here. So it, does Dabney get to take two puffs out of his inhaler of Moradin? <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's invented. It was invented by uh, a guy named Albert uh, Albert Buterol. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. oh my goodness i will so definitely re i will definitely reach for my albert buterol as i'm very excited about this next part we will see how it goes i just made an asthma joke <laughs> <laughs> that happened 2019 <laughs> market albert buterol <laughs> The inventor of the inhaler. Man. Oh, right back. I will say, like, as a GM, it is hard to truly play the bad guys properly against your characters sometimes. It's like, oh, that's the truth. 
to really be like a cruel a cruel uh, DM. Yeah. Well, I was looking at the list. I'm like, oh, he's got cloud kill. You guys are in a bunch. <laughs> cloud kill's so brutal. Yeah. Damn it. I was so pretty brutal. sure I was gonna die on the next turn. Uh, oh. Uh, Go, the stream goes until midnight Eastern time or 9 yes. p.m. Pacific. Yes. So got a little bit more time. Actually, that does uh, the uh, uh, Albert Buterol's uh, breathing magic sounds like a pretty awesome spell. Yeah. Just let you <laughs> let you breathe through it. Yeah. No. Uh, it it allows you to breathe in hostile environments normally. <laughs> I, it's honestly like more useful than a lot of other spells. Like I have, yeah. Two, which really I just got because we were going into the underdark, and I was like, "Well, someone's going to cast up." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know. I'm really excited to see the gem hammer spells. Yeah. So is that I. they have like one is like zone of cuteness or something, or zone of adorable suggestion or something like love, that. Love what they do. Yeah, it's. I pulled so up the, amazing. So I can start to explain it to you. Yeah, what did, um, what did you find? They have some really cool stretch goals. Here. The Good stretch goals are so cool. Nice. Level up doing those dice? Level yeah, up level up to, it has dice for them as well. We're doing lapis dice? Man. Oh, no. Yeah, I couldn't quite get up to that level of pledge. I wanted Do I need to. need a sixth set of level up dice? Do you not? Uh, you, you are all encouraging my my dice hoarding tendencies here. It's got a little. It's got a little symbol. Of... It's like I got a new set of dice at Pax West, Megan. Same here. Oh, you did. What? Yeah. What are they? What are they? I'll go get them. There's. I gotta no. see. I gotta see. Pretty dice are always welcome. As we wait for people to yeah. get back from bio breaks. Made a very nice uh, free candy. Lots of people are saying you need more dice, Doctor B. Yeah, me I mean, I also got the purple box from. <gasps> oh. Wait. So wait. So the ch chat. I would like to point out that y'all are enabling. Okay. <laughs> and they have different what? gems on all the all the sides, and then on the top number, like on the there's twenty and on the ten or whatever, there's the different dragons. Which are pretty sweet. I want so that. I want so many dice. Oh my, God. Oh my gosh. That's cool. Are That's so cool. Ones? They're really sweet. You mm. know, I wish I was cool enough to be able to tell you exactly what they were, but I am not. That cool. <laughs> They're Jade. Are they from Level Up? They're, they are from Level Up, yeah. Yeah. Wait, yeah. I mean, yeah, they did dice. But um, Alex sold them to me, and then um, they, uh, what was her name? Diana. I think Diana was, was like, you can't sell those. We're supposed to have those for like, this order and he was like no we filled that order she's like no we didn't and he's like oh i already sold to her <laughs> <laughs> it already happened They're oh mine. my god <laughs> yeah. so you got super special dice i have super special dice and i'm pretty excited about them yeah. all right yeah. are you guys ready to uh, jump so, back in? okay hold on gamer mom luna you have not been around me long enough to understand <laughs> that i don't need that kind of encouragement I just hang out in perpetuity at Level Up Dice's booth. Yeah, you can show up, give him up, he, and, and he's um, like they have to wipe off the drool from. They have a special yes, Doctor B. They drool have a right. Doctor B drool cloth now. He has a special <laughs> handkerchief. <laughs> they, it's, they know that it's so bad. It's just I, a. It's just an oval with a beard. They, <laughs> so when I when I debuted this fantastic new vest at Pax West, and I showed up there. They made me buy a purple dice holster just to match this hey, vest. It was, they, it was they made nice. you? They, they encouraged it. <laughs> <laughs> they encouraged the bad behavior. Everyone in Luna has seen you with Paxis every year. Every year? That's awesome. That is, <laughs> have you seen me that's, drool over the dice, though? Because it's embarrassing. It's amazing. It's charming. But, the dice is beautiful. All right. Anyway, we're going to get back into the game. So remember for our giveaway, which we'll do at the very end of the stream. Everybody do exclamation your... Part, yeah. Druid. Exclamation to get the... point, Druid. So exclamation Druid. Druid's what kept us alive. Druid. Thank you, Druid. Yes. You said that the code druid. was just Druid, and I thought it was like a Nike reference, just Druid. 
<laughs> yeah, no, no, exclamation yeah. point, druid. Yep. Just druid. Just druid. <laughs> just druid. It's not. It's druid. <laughs> Druid. Just Druid. Yeah, just Druid. Oh, Just Druid. Just Druid. Just Druid. I remember the Carmen San Diego hat. Where in the world? At PAX East. Salt it. Salt it, guys. No one else can pull off a hat like that with that kind of panache. Just Druid. Oh, God. Thank you, son of a hat. All right, getting back into things. I'm gonna change this up for a I moment. Think we made friends with all the zombies. I think that's what we. Did. I think that's what yeah, we. Did. I remember that. And now we're buddy buddy, right? Yep. And we're gonna have a zombie dance off. So it's gonna be great. as as you guys are all standing there and you see these giant forms and this tentacled face figure in front of them. Um, Dabney, Greg Nolden, Bairdon, go ahead and make a history check for me. Oh boy, not much of a story. Apparently, I'm not either. <laughs> I'm dying, so I can't concentrate. Oh, this is gonna be good. I actually got a modified 20 on this one. What? <laughs> I got a seven. I, hold on, right? Hold on. Does this hold on. This. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Do we need to prepare for the academic lecture from Gragnol? <laughs> kind of a big deal. <laughs> Gragnol, as you're looking up and caught seeing this sight and also having Dawn with you, recognizes. Oh God, it's him. You recognize the form that you once saw long, not too long ago, but long enough ago, far away in the jungle as you were <laughs> hunting some undeath. <laughs> uh, this would be. <laughs> you know, it doesn't ring a bell. I don't know. Most people, they have mouths. Fred? He didn't have mouths. He had squigglies. Was it the witch lady? Squigglies. I remember the witch lady from the jungle. You remember him? With the little doll. No, no, right. she had like, uh, she had like hair. <laughs> what, what squid? There were a lot of vines in the jungle. There were a lot of vines. Was it a vine person it or something? Vines, it was like Did you interact you with the You know when you person? turned into an octopus? You have like, <laughs> arms. It was like those arms, except for they were coming out of his face. Was it arms? Wait, face, face to puss? Face, face, face arms. You could call it. So. <laughs> do, we re do we remember at this point? As soon as Gragnall starts talking about it, you guys do recognize it. Uh, this guy, he's looking better than you last saw him when you fought him. Uh, when I you heard. saw him last, his skin wasn't fully healed. It, uh, there's definitely a gray pallor to the skin. Uh, but whatever you saw and fought was not at full power. This thing is radiating magic, even for those who don't use magic. Um, and I'd say for Baron and Kai and Bairden, uh, and actually now Gragnold as well, the wrongness of this magic is sitting with you guys. It, you're looking at something that goes against nature. You are seeing something that just should not exist. Right, and nope. Nope. Right, right, nope. Nope. <laughs> and nope. you see it is coming with an army and you see the drow coming forward and try meeting the, these undead creatures. And just, you see one of the <laughs> gigantic undead giants reaching up to one of the stalactites and ripping it off of the ceiling and using it to hurl at a crowd. Um, Zonra is coming forward. So quickly, quickly, there's a tunnel there. I think it leads to the surface eventually. Come on, we've got to get everyone out there. Go, go. Okay. Yeah, I think we we're going to run away. I think we should run away. Yeah. Yeah. Was a good idea. <laughs> um, I would, run I'll, away. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna extinguish Don just so we don't have any more attention on us. Good call. Okay. Um, what can we see of the city? 
What you see in the city is you do, so remember this was stalactites and stalagmites coming up with different mineral pools around. Uh, you see that it is pandemonium and chaos. You hear horn blasts happening all around. Those who you had been fighting have turned their attention towards some of the undead. You see swarms of rats coming in and scurrying up and scurrying around. There's lots around you guys also with the little purple purplish lights on their heads. Uh, and you just, again, you see uh, two, maybe three of these large undead giants moving through the city, uh, stopping to pull the stalagmites out of the ground and to wrestle stalactites. Seems That seems to be what their primary target is. And you see this creature above and you can all, as you look back, you hear in your voice, yes, fight so that you might join my army. Look at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it is a freckle past the nine out of here. So. <laughs> you, is anyone else tired? I'm not tired. <laughs> Are there more um, former Moonfang clan out there in the city? No. I, what are the, would you have asked somebody that going? I mean, would I know that? You were told that everybody's being held here. Cool. Everyone that they know of is being held here. Gotcha. Then I because I was and gonna totally go back into the city. No. <laughs> At this point, are the remaining the, the like wizard and the drider are they? They're off. They're. You do have that one blind drider. It's like I don't know what's going on. I'm really scared. And Jack's the only one who can understand. Jack and Zyber are the only two. <laughs> so bad. Now right. I want to find him to delete him out of here. I feel so bad. <laughs> 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 Hold on. What is the uh, what is the intelligence of uh, one of them? Um, I do speak with animals. Uh, it's a plus one. They have a thirteen. They're not an. It's a monstrosity. That's okay, <laughs> that's comforting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Zonra would push you guys all towards the tunnel. It's um, like creating a centaur, and, but but like a spider. But a spider. <laughs> No, and so, uh, as, being totally serious, I want to. You want to? I feel bad for this poor creature. Okay. Who is helping All right. in our friend? <laughs> um, and actually, at that point, he does make his save against the blindness, and he can see, and he sees you in front of him, and in, in undercommon is just going. I think in I undercommon, we have to get yep. you out of here. Oh, uh, okay. Can I ride you? Uh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just climb on its back. All right, so you okay. climb on his back. Well, and that you guys, is how he got the name Strider. Ah, oh God! Strider, <laughs> Ranger. He's a Ranger. Adam doesn't get that joke. Never seen the movies. Oh my God! Have you at least That's read the books? Gonna happen. It's going to happen eventually. So that everybody oh. knows the chat. Eventually, there will be a viewing party where we're going to make Adam watch all the books. Yes. <laughs> so. Yes. Mm -hmm. You all head into this tunnel, I'm assuming, following. Oh, yes. And so what you see, there's the large human male. You see uh, an elven male who's, or you see two elven male, both looking fairly beat up. You see several dwarves from the Moonfang clan. Um, to include uh, Otogret, uh, Answer, uh, you see... I have a whole list of everybody in pictures and everything. Uh, Chaldon, uh, she was the midwife and one of the healers of the clan. Jocasta is there. Uh, do you see Ru Ruby is also there? And Hastreet as well, all running and making their way towards the tunnels. Um, as a reminder, uh, Jocasta has been lamed, as has a, a, an elven woman. Uh, they are moving at about ha at half speed. I'm a large sized yeah. creature with a movement speed of 50. I have an elf. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Are you a large creature with a movement speed of 50? <laughs> <laughs> Great then. All right. So you load up the <laughs> lamed ones That's on your back. On, so That's on. true. Yeah. You have the, the hoodies <laughs> on. <laughs> How many can ride on a drider? Uh, I'd say probably two comfortably. I'll give up my seat for some of the lame ones. If. Okay, so some of the ones that are not 
So you guys get into this tunnel. Um, as you're rushing in, there's several of these rats coming around. You see Zonor pulling out her blades, kind of fighting a few of them. I assume you guys would be helping out with this. And she looks over at all of you. She's like, go, run. I'll catch up if I can. Uh, I, act I actually try and gra grab her and carry her while I cast Burning Hands as a cone. Okay. To try and just gotcha. figure out a... I'm killing it with fire. I'm going arachnophobia. You go and kill it. All right. So you go kill it with fire. Um, yeah. Make a persuasion check. Persuasion check? Nothing. I'm just going to carry her and run. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I'll do sure. a persuasion check. Sure. That I get well, I just rolled a one for her. What's that? I just rolled a one for her uh, contested for getting carried. So. And I got a 19. Okay. So, so boom, she's coming. Carry, and speaking of fire, nah. All right. I think so, I what we are going to do here is a skill challenge. As you guys are fleeing, you are going to be being pursued. You have three degrees of success right now. Okay. What's going to happen is you're going to be coming against different obstacles. Each player can have an opportunity to narrate how they're going to help the group as a whole get through this, the different obstacles. You will make a roll. I'll call for what role it is. Um, if you fail but are close to succeeding, you can spend some of your degrees of success to make it a success. If you go above the DC you need, you gain more degrees of success. Uh, degrees of failure, bad stuff does happen to the party. This is gonna be also a thing that you need to do quickly. Thinking about, so this is gonna be a lot of thinking on your feet and trying to figure out what to do as you go along to try to get this. Oh, no. I knew oh, that, no. I knew <laughs> I was gonna hate that thing as soon as you had it in the test room. <laughs> Oh, so, God. This is, oh, is everybody so ready? Oh. Starting off with three degrees of success. Three degrees of success, okay. You guys all start going down the, the tunnels. It's dark, but most of you have the ability to see in the darkness and in the dark vision. Many uh, of the people that you're bringing with you are starved and not moving very well. Twisting through the different caverns, you're able to figure out through... Well, actually, let's just go ahead. First challenge here, figuring out which way to go. You come to an area that opens up. <clears throat> I smell. Okay. Put it down. Uh, go, ahead. It down. Awesome. go ahead and make a per perception check. You definitely smell. <laughs> uh, I, I have an uh, advantage on, yep. on smelling. I have I'll, I'll call that a 15. Um, that is a, a 18. 18. You smell. One of the pathways seems a little, seems okay, but then as you walk up close to it, no, that's sulfur. And then you find another one that smells clear and you lead everybody down that pathway. Skirting along, <laughs> pointing, going along, you guys are rushing along. And even though you've already been traveling for a good half hour, 45 minutes, you do still hear the sounds of <laughs> different or driders behind you, undead some things. Rat. Or the rats, you're not sure. Yeah. You're moving as quick, uh, with Gragnold's totem of the elk, you all are able to move rather quickly, even though you've got several people with you who are not looking well, not looking healthy. As you Is go along- anything flammable in the, in, <laughs> in, on the walls or anything? Not too much, it's pretty barren. It's mostly just stone. Um, sometimes you're seeing little bits of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are we going downhill or going uphill? Uh, you're slowly, you do feel uh, a gradual incline happening. You guys come to an open area and you see before you a, basically like a bridge, a natural bridge going over this large chasm. It is incredibly narrow though, uh, probably only about two feet wide. Well, that's time for that time. Uh, How are you here? gonna get all of these people across? Uh, who's got a rope? I've got a rope. I've got a rope. How, how, how big is the cavern, the chasm? I'll say it's about 70 feet. Okay. Who's got long enough rope? I will tightrope my way across that thing. 
I don't know how long my rope is. Uh, most ropes are 50, so you're going to need two ropes if you want the rope to go all the way across. I also have rope. Okay. Tied together, I will tightrope my way across that thing and hold it on the other side so people can guide themselves. All right, make an acrobatics check. Oh, Thanks. plus I should also say you guys have now have six degrees of success. Okay, acrobatics check. I'm going to go with a 27. 27. Awesome. You're able to scurry across getting getting this rope to the other side. Everybody's able to come along, but you do hear the scurrying sounds getting closer because everyone has to go fairly slowly. Um, this is going to be a later. difficult thing for our moon wolf to go across. Are you going to go across a moon wolf form or are you going to drop that form? Uh, can you not jump? Oh, it's too narrow. I don't think I can jump 70 feet. Yeah. <laughs> Thread the collar. Uh, I will drop <laughs> Moon Wolf. Okay. So but going back in. When I get to the other side, uh, I want to. I used stop up two. Oh, okay. I'll wait. I'll wait on it. I'll wait. Okay. Can I, so. Can I, can, I, can I take an action real mm -hmm. quick, Megan? So sure. if we were moving uphill through sort of a, a rocky terrain and things mm -hmm. are chasing us, can I, uh, uh, I, I would, here's what I would like to do. I would like to sort of uh, 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 caress the tooth necklace around my neck and then have, uh, uh, I'd like to cast Create Water um, in mm -hmm. the tunnel to make it a wet terrain so that they have a harder time chasing us. Maybe I'll gotcha. Yeah. Nice, yes. So kind of going towards the back, making sure everybody gets up, you come to a narrower part and you do a Create Water to create this wash of water. And behind you, you hear some squeaking and some sounds. You still hear some pursuit, but it's definitely a lot less and it's further away. Now there are wet rats chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> <Very good. laughs> All right. Uh, so eventually everybody is able to get across this cavernous bridge. Uh, we, cut the, uh, we cut the rope. Uh, the bridge, okay. So. Cut the rope so, behind you? <clears throat> boom. Well, Thank no, you. it isn't the bridge a rope bridge? No, no, it's a, it's a stone, but it's it was like, it is a very, very narrow bridge. But so by bringing a rope across, you gave everybody else a handhold so that they yeah, wouldn't yeah, fall okay. off. Yeah, okay. Then we definitely yeah. cut helped. the rope. All right. Make sure that that does not uh, not get used to help them. Um, oh. Also, before before we go, uh, can I use elemental attunement to create a patch of ice on there? Sure. Uh, you're not sure how long it will last. It's fairly warm here. Then it's but, a slippery yeah. patch of death. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you create Either a patch of ice on I mean, it. I try and find like the mossiest part. Okay. Hey, I, would, <laughs> I would actually like to use my primeval awareness. I'm going to spend mm -hmm. uh, a level two spell slot. Basically, I'm using this to sense if any undead are present within one mile of us as we're traversing mm -hmm. to make sure we're mm -hmm. not being tracked or followed. Does uh, yes, there are... A, a, there are undead within a mile of you. Okay, so that basically tells us that there it doesn't reveal location or number, but at least I know mm -mm. when we're getting away from them. That'll last for up to two minutes. Uh, quick question, does the Underdark, mm -hmm. where we're at, does this qualify in any way as mountain or no? Oh, it's, it's Underdark. Okay, never mind then. So only All right. a mile. So Megan, you guys, yep. For that 27 roll, does that give uh -huh. us more degrees of success? It does. It gives you another, uh, actually it gives you a lot of degrees. It gives you um, 12 degrees of success. So we're up to 18 so degrees of success. You guys are up to 18 right now. Which is good. So if one of the roll, rolls is low. <laughs> All right. Going that. along, uh, you guys come to this one area and running through rushing, you see this long tentacle-like arm sweep down. Uh, you see that's Several of the stalactites that are on the ceiling are not stalactites. They are creatures with large mouths. I cast... Oh, dang it. Uh, I cast Pass Without Trace. Okay. So go ahead and make a stealth check for me. Actually, I'm going to have everybody make a stealth check, and I'm going to make two, two general rolls for the party. No, I have 26. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> What'd we get? Natural 20. Natural 20? 30. 26. <laughs> 26? 
13. 13. Dirty. One. So a one for one here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is actually not going to get you guys any more degrees of success. This is just a pass. So you guys are able to get through and sneak around these these creatures, um, and uh, it, it's a couple of times some of the survivors are stumbling and it's hard for them to stay quiet, and Dabney. Uh, ends up sacrificing his own stealth to try and silence other people to push them along and to get them to go. I'm a hero. <laughs> You're still a slither. <laughs> so. Don't be as, you, <laughs> as you guys come along, you eventually are traveling up, 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 up. It's been a long time of walking. It's been hard. This has been a very, very hard push. Several of the people you've rescued are needing more support, needing to be carried more. You still hear the distant sounds of pursuit, but you hear a promising sound, that of rushing water. And you come forward and you see before you a quickly flowing underground uh, river. And... On the other bank, far away, it's you can't make it out fully, but there's light. How big is this space that we're in? Uh, you're in a very large cavern, and it's uh, the river's probably about 40 feet across. I think, I, well, so I need to talk to Barrett in for a moment. <laughs> and remember, you guys are on the time. So. so I want to shape shift into something to go across this, but you know, this is not my strong suit. I'm thinking crocodile. Is that big enough to carry a bunch of people? Is there something bigger? Is it a giant crocodile? I don't know. I can't. I'm looking through your She can't turn into a giant because she's Orca? What? A whale? Wait, I, don't wait. I don't think you can. Okay. She can't turn into that high of a CR. She's not circle of the moon. I can turn into a crocodile. I got to carry some, be able to carry some people as a crocodile. You'd only be able to carry like one or two. Oh, that's a waste. Okay. <clears throat> Guys, gotta uh, hurry, hurry. Yeah. Time's almost up. Octopus? Yeah, I was gonna say, can you an octopus? You ones, right? You could sucker a bunch of people and climb up still. All right. Okay. As you all are debating on the the shore of the river, <laughs> <laughs> there's sounds as several of these creatures come pouring out. Eventually you guys just basically say F it and jump in trying to swim and get everybody across. On the dive, on the swim, you're pulling as many people as you can. I'm gonna go ahead and everybody make strength saving throw for me. 16. Okay. 14. 30, 20. Modified one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'm going to do one for Zandra here. Success. All right. Who's this going to be? As you guys are swimming across and trying to bring these exhausted prisoners with you, to, say, to safety. You're swimming along and holding on and one of the dwarves from the Moonfang clan, you're holding on and they don't know how to swim to begin with and you see them flailing. Uh, this is Great Ale. Uh, Gragnall, you would have known him especially, very, very fond of ale, fond of drinking and fighting and as he's swimming along trying to go, he's not quite able to hold on and you're just tr trying to hold on to his hand it slips from your grip and he is taken away by the current. Can I swim after him? You could try, but the current's going to take you as well. It's a pretty strong current here. Can I swim after him? <laughs> Do I, am I able to summon anything? Like, can uh, I cast a spell here? Or, or this is one of those things. Before I have a chance to do anything. So this is having to go with the degrees of sex, success and failure that you guys have built up and then your final strength check with the time running out for this. 
uh, you see one of the human men that came with you was swimming along. Uh, what there was a wood gnome that was among the the grouping here. She started to slip slip under, and he actually was able to pull her up and kind of throw her towards the shore enough so that when someone else was able to get a hand on. And you saw the current just take him away and rush, and then you actually saw his body slam up against a rock not too far oh. down the road river. And uh, well, one of the other elves, uh, an elven female who had not been looking very good, um, seemed like they had been really working on trying to convert her over uh, during the swim. She, she and another two, these two elves have been working together and were pretty commonly. And uh, she was able to push what you assumed to be her sister up onto the shore, but she wasn't able to save herself as she also was dragged away by the current of the river. Can I throw a rope after them? Do you have any more rope? Yeah, I have rope. You guys throw, but it's, uh, try, but they're gone. So ultimately though, of the 24 prisoners you guys rescued, you only lost three. What, what was on the other side that we were fleeing from? Can you see it now? Uh, coming out, you do see several a, a large swarm of these rats coming forward. They come to this river and they don't seem to be able to cross. A few jump in, um, but they just are immediately taken away by the current. And eventually you see the little purpley lights of their head start to make their way back down the tunnel. As you all make your way towards the light, looking up and seeing dawn above you. Eventually you all are climbing um, and seeing the daylight again is reinvigorating all of you. And eventually you guys make your way out of the underdark and back oh. into the light. Holy crap. So you, <laughs> coming forward, you see many of those that you saved blinking, blinded by the bright light of the sun shining in their eyes as they stumble forward, several of them falling to their knees on the grass and just touching it, running their fingers through it. You see the one elven girl cradling, a, going over to a flower and cradling it and just tears gently rolling down her face as she looks to it. Uh, you see a couple of another elven male come over to her and just kind of hold on to her shoulders. I go do the same thing. And you see Zanra pulling up her hood and blinking in the bright, bright light. As you all are seeing sunlight again for the first time in over a week. Can I try to look around for what might be a safe forest area for us to be able to set mm -hmm. up like a temporary camp? While yeah, there, go ahead and everyone, I'm gonna do yep, that. Make a survival check. Okay, I have advantage on survival. Am I preferred terrain? Yes. I th well, I think it's you get double. What well, just rolls advantage? Uh, it's easier. Yeah, for, uh, in I think it's double proficiency in favorite terrain. Uh, yep, proficiency bonus is doubled. Yeah, but I'd say just just roll with it. You could either roll an advantage or double your proficiency, whichever one you want to do. I'll do it with advantage. I feel like that's easier. Uh, yes. Nature, that'll be a nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, not. <clears throat> you feel the need to get pretty far away from this cave. Um, just because you don't know what's going to be coming out of it. Uh, so going, uh, you wander a field a bit, uh, probably about a mile, mile and a half away. You find a good area, um, fresh water nearby. There's a lot of glacial runoff this time of year, so all the water is pretty fresh and good. Lots of good thing, fresh foods that you all can eat. And uh, it's a good area where you've got solid stone to your back and a fairly narrow opening to your top. It's not cave-like, which you imagine is going to be pretty good for a lot of the people who've been trapped for so long. 
uh, but definitely easily defendable and plenty of dry wood to find to make a proper fire. Um, and it looks like also the sides are sheltered enough that you could probably hide the light of the fire pretty easily. Yeah, basically my plan was I'll find the place, tell everybody where it's gonna be then while they're getting there because I can move faster and prefer terrain. I'm gonna to try to forage that way when everybody does arrive, they have prepared food mm -hmm. and area for rest and comfort. All right, and you have Outlander background? Uh, I believe, hold on, I just wanna make sure. Yes, that is correct. Okay, yeah, so with Outlander background, you're able to find double the amount of food. So it, it's very easy. At this point in the summer, um, you're able to collect lots of things for yeah, everybody have, to eat. I have Outlander as well as Natural Explorer. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you gather plenty of food. Uh, you're actually able to, uh, what kind of, would Baron go and hunt some meat for them, or? Uh, yes. All right, what, what, would, what kind of game would he go after? Uh, I, naturally, he would try to prefer at this point just anything that would be easier, like anything mm -hmm. that would appear to be sickly, though not poisonous or older. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you see an elk. Um, very majestic looking, but also past its prime. Um, one of the horns seems to be kind of half snapped off. Looks like he maybe lost a fight not too long ago. My permission, so honest for this blessing. It is for people in need. Thank you. And you're able to fell it without issue. And there's plenty of food for everyone as you all eventually make your way towards this sheltered area, enjoying f fresh air, sunlight, and the sounds of nature around you. <clears throat> um, I wanna walk up to Zanra um, and say, uh, what are the chances that this was uh, uh, on coincidence? I, don't know that I, uh, what was that thing I, it, it was an illithet of some kind but I've never seen anything like that I'm pretty sure we came across it before how Gragnold you're the his history expert <laughs> uh, Gragnold has taken this opportunity to bust out <laughs> some males And Zara would gladly down one. So we, uh, so Emerald tells, uh, tells Zanra about the rot that was pervading the jungle that we encountered long ago, as well as the infectious nature of this rot and the giant brain that we had to defeat in the jungle. Sounds like an elder brain. I've yeah, never we've heard, we did hear that before. I've never seen one before. You don't want to see them generally. It's as bad. They can put you under a spell. You're incredibly lucky to be alive. Well, well, they tried. But, you know, they tried to mind control Gragnold, but you, they missed. Oh, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a moving target, really. <laughs> You see her kind of nod. It makes sense. Um, one of the things that you guys would notice too, uh, the other elves that were rescued uh, definitely are keeping their distance from Zanra. Um, does Zanra say anything about it? No, she doesn't seem to. We noticed this? Yeah. They're definitely like giving her stink eye. I walk over to those elves and I sit down cross-legged and just stare at them. And I in Elvish one of them says to you it's like for the balance we thank you for saving us brother. Your face isn't familiar to me but what trees do you hail from? I hail from the trees of Windhold. And you, so him. you, yeah, we'll answer that question in a second. And you are staring very, very ungratefully 
It's someone who just saved your life. She is drow. She's one of Loth's. She is a betrayal to Corleone and all that is natural. She is my friend, my companion, as are the dwarves we are with. And they rescued you. He kind of looks down and looks over. She did. I did see her fight for us. You're right. I had to drag her away from saving you all, quite literally. She almost gave up her life for you. Well, he would look over to her and nod and in common just say, thank you for your help. And uh, he gets up and actually goes over and starts helping Baron with dressing the animal. Are you sure you just walked away? Okay, that was a good start. <laughs> good start. I see the the other male elf that was sitting there is he's not really saying anything. He's at the you see that he's picked up uh, a couple of stones and he's starting to work on fashioning one into a knife. You planning on using that? I'm not going to be caught defenseless again. You're surrounded by people who will defend you. My blade is my life. They failed me once. I'm not going to get failed again. I, uh, I approach very carefully and sit down next to this one, parallel, staring off into, into space, not, not staring at him. Mm -hmm. What's your name, friend? Phelan. Phelan. Phelan, we're gonna take care of you. The way these all these folks all took care of me. I was alone. They helped. Yet Felor was lost to the waters. And how many others were lost to the work and this indentured servitude we were forced into? Well, 24 more would have been lost if it wasn't for these people and you. Hmm. Perhaps it would feel better if he just knew he could defend himself. Yeah, make you feel better, Phalor? Phelan. Phelan, yes. thank you. Sorry. Well, it's yeah. been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will say, like, you guys have been running for over a day. It's like, been a long day, <sighs> Phelan. See, I'm failing at remembering your name. Oh, it's just oh. Yes, puns will win the See, with like <laughs> new vigor yeah. at making the stone knife as you say the pun. <laughs> no, that's an appropriate response. <laughs> I'm, I'm also failing at making you laugh. I've got, a, just, you know, I've got a spare hand axe. I'm just going to grab it and toss it at his feet <laughs> as I continue to drink by myself under a tree. He understands <laughs> your pain here, Phelan. As you toss the axe towards his feet, he actually grabs it right before it hits the ground and kind of tosses it up and Ooh. Looks over to you and nods. That's a good job. Um, of the survivors, there's the large human male, I've Phelan. Uh, the other wood elf that's gone over and sitting with Baron is Bellis. There is a uh, forest gnome named Ace Enkar. <laughs> See, uh, several members of the Moonfang clan have made it out to include Pastreet, Ruby, Jocasta, Cheldon, 
the midwife one I was telling you about, uh, an older warrior male named Druz, uh, elven female uh, Fei Li. We got Fei Lin and Fei Li. Mm -hmm. They've got to be related. <laughs> and they did say the one who drowned's name was Falor. <laughs> I Baron kind of lets the guy that came over near me and is dressed. Mm -hmm. I kind of like try to gauge whether or not letting him take more control over making the meal is like kind of helping to uh, a little bit. Make an insight check. Nine. Nine. Hard to say. It's just, he seems to be comforted by doing something that he knows and being around people that he's familiar with. I'm, I'm going to kind of step away and you seem to be doing an excellent job of preparation. Perhaps I'll leave you to it and check on the others. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, of the other dwarves, you see Utgrit is there. A male named Farden, another male named uh, Rounded, uh, another fighter named Darden, and the other two elves. Uh, uh, sorry, I just lost count. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thirteen. Uh, so there was the large human male. There were large human male, and then there was actually another small collection of dwarves that uh, were not from the Moonfang clan, that were from the Dorvan Citadel. Um, I'm going to go up to Gragnall, I guess, under the tree and go, Gragnall, what do we do now? I think we should rest. And I suppose tomorrow we should go back down there and kill the rest of them. <laughs> First we rest. You hear Dawn's voice in your head, Greg, let's go. Let's not go back to the Underdark for a while, please. I don't know where else to go. I mean, we have to take all of them back somewhere. They can't stay here. No. Nope. I guess we have to rebuild the clan. Why? Um, you know, Baron's going to gesture over all the previous members of the clan. Moonfang clan is dead, Baron. What do we have to build? Mm. The Moonfang clan follows <coughs> follows the wolf spirit. Wolf spirit's still there. The members are here. At least the remaining one. Yep. Yep. Is that not your role, Gregor? I don't know anymore, Bairdon. I don't know. I, I sort of thought I'd feel better right now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> this one's full of centipedes. <laughs> it's my secret ingredient. The name is Clyde. <laughs> I will. Dabney walks over to two of them and and uh, sits down, puts an arm around each of them, and uh, says, "So, are we going to take them back to where the Ghost Fang Clan can be safe?" 
I don't know where that is, Dabney. What about the, what about the ancient home of the moon thing plan? I think we should give them the choice. Hey! <laughs> at this hey. point, uh, the street actually comes over and sits next to you, Gragnold. And she kind of looks at you. Aren't you at least going to offer me a drink? <laughs> yes. <sighs> I did earlier. Sure. <laughs> You always work tongue-tied around me. Nobody's great. I really wish I had a potion of wonder right now. <laughs> really break up the tension. And anyway, I, I, I just, well, at this point, the, like... I used the last one before we went into the Underdark. That was how he became Dabney. <laughs> how, long, how much longer are you Dabney? What do I got? Twenty-one days of Dabney left. Uh, something like that. Yeah, I have to update the calendar now that you guys have gotten out. We're in the Underdark for a week. Mm. Yeah, a little longer, I think. But anyway, that's it'll take me too long to look up. At this point, like a few members of the Moonfang Clan come over. Um, also, I don't remember if I mentioned this last time or not. Um, Baradin looks slightly different at this point. <laughs> his hair, is, be <laughs> his hair has become hair. much shaggier and fuller uh there's all like he's got like these little cowlicks are almost like <laughs> suggestive of ears <laughs> and uh his hair's silvered slightly and his eyes also have lightened quite a bit um almost to a grayish color <laughs> Uh, someone's got some explaining to do. <laughs> you didn't notice before when we were in the... It was dark in there. There was bugs for a brief moment. There was cloud. You saw the cloud. It was dark. It was late. It was, it was, it was, what happened? What did... Tell us what... Well, the wolf bear gave me this cool sword! <laughs> did it glow? <laughs> it is glowing slightly. <laughs> wolf, wolf bang sword. Wolf bang sword, good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't really talk. Has it met Don yet? So here, hey Don. <laughs> are you? Guys are making the swords talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I mean, God. like, we already... kissy noises. Like, oh, I <laughs> wanted to have a friend. <laughs> you tried. You tried that with my sword. Yeah, she didn't like my sword. My sword doesn't talk. I even do oh, you do. You do hear in your head, Gregnold. Oh, that's an interesting one. I think I like the Mooney one better, though. Yeah, I won't. Well, I won't say that out loud. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> my goodness <laughs> oh what's Unkai doing while all this is happening I think um, when they got to camp she probably would have wandered off because you know uh, the Moonfang clan has all of their members to reunite with and Baron was making camp so I think I would have she would have gone off to the water just by herself um, snuck away just to soak up the sun be back mm -hmm. by the water um i think she's probably happy to be not in darkness so just enjoying a quiet moment alone and she'd probably sneak back at some point mm -hmm. when i guess the, as, the elf as you're on. as you're sitting down there um you notice the one elven girl coming forward and sitting down and she kind of gently runs her fingers through the water as well uh, thank you for saving us. It was well done of you. It wasn't just me, but I'm glad that you are safe. Wish we all could have gotten out of there, but 
I understand you all did a, everything you could. I think they just nod. Maybe. I think Ankai would probably be crying. I mean, it's pretty dramatic, like the deaths in the water. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Maybe she just like nods and a little cry. My sister's with Carleon's light now. Her soul will be at peace. I wish she could have seen the light again, but she's free. And now so are you. Where will you go? I don't know. Where will you go? I think I'll try to venture back to my homeland, but I don't really know where we are. Uh, we can find your way home. The stars will take us there. Hmm. Stars, that will be nice to see again. I'd say about this time, you guys want to <laughs> Just the time to see Gragdol to pull out his Are those violins caterpillar. I hear music. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, As you wait all a minute, settle. hold on. I have a very important question. Yes. I do too. Who has checked on Hobbs and who has checked on Bun Bun? Oh, yeah. Hobbs, I, I'll say Hobbs and Bun Bun are with you. Um, make a couple of animal handling checks for me, though. Fared it. <clears throat> also, um, is the drider with me? Yeah, I was wondering. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Yes, <laughs> the drider friend, I think, would have come out with you guys. Uh, the elves, uh, nobody wants to be around the drider at all. I will say that. Um, I, I, then I, I'll go to the drider and hang out with him and, and, and take some stag all right and, and it, it's it, it's not looking happy being in the sun it's found like the spot in the shade and and it's like so uh what's what am i uh what am i doing here um <laughs> what do i do well what do you want to do um well, I mean, there was a lot of undead things down there. That didn't look good. I don't I don't think I want to go uh, deal with those again. Well, and this is all an undercommon again, so actually, Dabney, you wouldn't... Oh, that, I don't understand it. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a name? Uh, the, do they just refer to us typically by uh, little titles of what we did. It's usually just called guard. If you had to choose a name, what name would you choose for yourself? Oh, uh, wow. Um, no pressure. I don't, I don't even know. Like, what what kind of name do I look like I should have? It's Gordon. Uh, so what what is the general like because i remember the the icon it was like a, a white one mm -hmm. yeah this very pale um like white hair more like uh almost like an albino type body i was i was gonna say something like what about albie albie <laughs> did you ever see that show big love uh, there was a character uh, named albie he was very yeah. pale <laughs> i could I could be an Albie. I think that's that's a good name for me. Albie. I'll Albie. be back. <laughs> so can I call him Al? Are you sure you can call me Al? Sorry. I thought that's where you were going with that one. Being. That's exactly where I was going with it. Yeah. Right. I love that album. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so um what do you do on the surf surface is it like this fireball thing always there if it's really it it's really hard to see we might have to try and figure a way around that it 
kind of stays up for a while, then it goes down. It goes down. Where's the room? Like there isn't really one. See, they make glasses to enable me to see in your world. Perhaps if we made a device that would enable you to yeah. not be so impacted to maybe shade you from the sun somehow. Glass. That would be really great. <laughs> Can it be like an umbrella hat? Because <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I think I'm kind of creeping everybody else out here. Um, I mean, like, the city where I was from, they didn't really like my kind that much either. Like, my people, like, my we kind of freak people out. So, like, I feel like I should probably go somewhere where I'm not going to be around lots of people. I wouldn't want you to feel that you're in danger. I just didn't want you to get hurt back there. Thank you. Change your perspective. Well, you know, what I could do, I, I could go back up to that cave we popped out of and kind of keep an eye on things. Maybe like build some big webs there, you know, like keep people from going either way. I would feel very honored if you would do that for us. Yeah, I think I'll, that's what I'll do. Uh, sorry, I didn't get your name. What, what was it? Baron. Barrett. Well, you know me, I'm now Albie. <laughs> and I'll be back. I'm going to go make some oh. webs. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Megan, Megan. Yes. Do we see the two of them talking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I would say you see them talking. I, okay. Emerald shouts to Baron. Baron. Yes. Does your new friend want a beer? I don't think so. At, ask him if he wants a beer. Have you ever had a beer? What's beer? It's a drink. It uh, makes you feel good. <laughs> okay, sure, I'll feel good. Way to pitch it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give the driver a mug of beer. Oh my god. <laughs> Actually, give him like three because he's got a lot of arms. <laughs> no, nah. This is a picture I need to see. <laughs> Drider thrown back a bunch. <laughs> well, you gotta give him gotta give him like three or four, because one for a leg and your legs can break. <laughs> can hold on to one, one for each <laughs> set of eyes. <laughs> yeah, give him yes. Some yes. So I, big friends. He drinks the beer. Um, you see him pull out <clears throat> one of the centipedes in it and just starts chewing on it thoughtfully. It's very good flavoring with the, the bugs. I really appreciate. You know, people don't appreciate how good. Bugs are, but like a bug he, drink. Saying that, I was like, <laughs> 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 and, and I think like Zonora would be standing back and would translate for you guys. Bear, what's your friend's name? <laughs> he has decided his name is Alby. He's going to actually help us out. He's going to put some webbing up on the exit to the cave to stop things from coming back after us. He's very thankful that we brought him with us. Which which one? Alby, <laughs> it is very nice to meet you. I I give. You <laughs> Why is the small shaggy one shouting? <laughs> You'll get used to that. He kind of does that. Okay. I'm going to teach him how to say hello to you. In right. So I, 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 I teach Aaron how to say it's nice to meet you. Or whatever the equivalent was. <laughs> um, uh, make make an intelligence check, oh, both boy. of you. This is gonna be good. Actually, sorry, Jack. For you, it's a charisma check for teaching. And for oh, that's great. <laughs> I got a dirty twenty. I have an, I have an eleven. Okay, all right. You're able to convey the information well enough that yeah, Faridin, you can say. It's a, a, an honor to meet you in Undercommon. Meet, honor, you come, yes. 
wow, he, he seems to, the shaggy one picks things up really well. That's awesome. I like this bug beer. <laughs> They're more, I want more of the bug drink. I think you have a potential market in drider ale. <laughs> Ale, that's great. High <laughs> Dried or ale sold in the eight pack. Whoa. <laughs> Pretty good. I think now you know what to do. Now that this is done, you're going to go into the brewery business. Yeah. <laughs> um, so eventually, Alby makes his way back towards the cave um, and perhaps becomes a guardian of the, these parts. Uh, I'll say, Baron, um, go ahead and make a survival check for me. Bye, Alby! <laughs> I like that guy. <laughs> I don't know what he said, but he was cool. 17. 17. Um, as the sun starts to set, it's seeing the angle of the suns and where you are in the mountains, um, finally starts to clue you in on where you are. And as the sun, stars start to come out that night, you figure out you're at the, at this strange kind of Southern area of the moonlit mountains. It's sort of in this region that's, I don't want to call it a no man's land, but it's like the dwarves claim that it's their land. The human empire claims it's their land and the elf, <clears throat> elven clans claim it's their land, but kind of nobody bothers really to do much with it because it's lots of big craggy mountains that aren't really useful for much of anything besides natural exploring and things. Okay. So you're just sort of in this Southern area so, to give so you an idea. Where we're all familiar with, like as far as like where the moon fang clan was and where we originally kind of come from, what are we closest to? Uh, you are close. So, actually, do I have the map on here? Hold on. Uh, let me just see. That's the wrong spot. So, we have now made friends with a drider named Albie. Yep. I, I am go. I would like to pitch that all of these elves and these gnomes may are part of the Moonfang clan now. You have a choice. We just did that. Well, I didn't hear the conversation you all had. Oh, yeah. Hmm. We have to give them a choice. You guys are somewhere, if you look at the map where I'm pinging in that region. The Moonfang clan was up here. Mm. Our and region. You guys came from like over here originally. That's about where um, uh, Rashetta was. Ursha, Ursha, sorry. If we were going to give them a choice, we couldn't pick a better place to do it. We're smack down in the middle of many people's claims to this land. So people could go to their own kind if they wish. It would take us quite a few to get back to where the Moon Bank clan was. So that is your decision, not mine. But I'm with you, whichever way you decide to go. Just as a weird mental other thing that mm -hmm. I'm going to keep to Baron's own self, how far am I from my home? Pretty far. Okay. Like over a month away by oh. land. Gotcha. So um, I'm, I'm going to walk okay. through real briefly what I think Baron would do, Baron would do next. Okay. So he's taken the position of, of leading the moon thing. Mm -hmm. So I think his, his process basically to figure out next is, is to take the moon thing clan back, back to the homelands and, and start to rebuild the moon thing. I don't know if that's what Gragnon wants to do or what Dad wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think he would offer the choice. 
to anybody who's who's left for whether or not they want to come and vote. Um, we, is, it, is it nighttime after we were running for a day? Yeah, like you guys were running for it. So when you came out of that cave, let's say it was probably just getting towards like noon. And so you guys set up camp and you've had all this time and it's um, the sun's setting now, like the sun is just set and the stars have started to come out um, as you guys are trying to talk. And like um, Jocasta actually comes forward and sits down next to both of you. And she's like, I'm just, I couldn't help but overhear y'all, you're talking, but look, let's sleep a day or two. We're all exhausted. You're not, none of us are going to make good choices right now. We need I've some time. Had eight beers. <laughs> <laughs> good choices are far behind you right now. <laughs> good choices. <laughs> well, give me a good You're choice. All wrong, <laughs> Let's all sleep. <laughs> For Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> And um, for time's sake, um, as you all are sleeping, each of you uh, sleep through and med for Dabney and meditate through the first part of the night. Fairly quiet, like not just quietly, like you are out. Like you all are exhausted. Um, Zoner is able to help. The elves are all able to help keep watch. Um, there's enough of them, and to swap between times of meditation and being alert, that they're able to keep watch for everybody. Um, Can I? Meditate? During, yeah, I was gonna say. Well, during the night, each of you will have a vision. Gragnold, you are in the circle of all the other avatars of the Moonfang clan. And basically it's like a mental party. They are all celebrating and incredibly happy. And you see that coming to you and saying, you've done so well, better than we could have hoped. Take some time to rest and recover, but the omens are pointing that the worst is not behind you yet. But you've bought time, and that's incredibly valuable. I don't know what to do next. You look very happy. I don't I don't feel that way. And uh, is there one of the elders that Gragnold would feel more drawn to than the others? Probably the hairy one. All right, so the first one. <laughs> um going up to him he kind of looks at you and he does have a smile playing around his mouth but it's much more reserved than the rest of them is he points over towards one of the others it's like the prophecy that that one was given was that you'd either get us to survive or destroy us but you're still here obviously we're just surviving so far, so good, I guess. So, that's why they're all happy. They, we, don't have the burden of living. You do. You do have to figure out what's next, but. He kind of slaps you on the shoulder. It's like, you saved your people. Feel proud of that. Look, okay. we're in this thing, just turning towards the fan, fang. It's making it up half the time. You just sound like you know what you're talking about. They kind of all go with it. <laughs> Pretty true. <laughs> Sometimes, pick up some leaves and crumple them up and throw them in the air. It looks like you're doing some sort of seeing or something. I'd say the leaves say no if you don't want to do something. It works pretty well. <laughs> okay. Crumple up the leaves. Got it. 
<laughs> Still not sure what to do after that. Though. Just make something up. It's all right. I, and you hear one of the one of the other elders kind of walks over. It's like that's terrible advice. <laughs> as you hear this bird calling, and it kind of wakes you up as light is kind of pouring in your face. Um, I'm just going to go down the line here uh, to uh, Bearden. You again have a vision of seeing the moon wolf, but this time you're not sparring. Just they walk, it walks up to you and just gives you a nuzzle in the chest and you just feel again this warm approval coming over. Um, and suddenly you find yourself sitting next to the moon wolf on a high cliff looking out and you see towns below you and off in the distance you see storm clouds. Um, <laughs> Baron's gonna, gonna look over the whole thing and be like, I know, <laughs> I get it. The metaphor is not lost on me. I know the story is coming. <laughs> and, and you kind of look over and you just kind of see this like wolf grin. Like the, their tongue actually kind of hangs out of the side of the mouth for a moment and nuzzles you again. But then what do we do? The Moon Fang Clan's still here. Do I lead them or do I stop that? You look down, you see that the, the wolf's looking down towards a small pack of wolves. And you see some creatures coming, gnolls. And what you see is a couple of the wolves separate from the rest of the pack to go and start leading the gnolls off in different directions and harrying them while the younger ones go off find a den of safety. So where are the gnolls? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I got it. I think I got it. Uh, if if a wolf could face palm, it would face palm. <laughs> um, Omens 101. <laughs> and we're going to leave it with this one. And Kai. As you rest, you start to dream of water. And power, incredible power. You see being above the water and being able to pull up like cyclones of water moving around, pushing them forward. You see a ship being able to gigantic, capsized. You just feel the swell of power looking at it. And as you look at that, there's sort of this tugging at you. And you wake up and you find in your hand the blue gem you took from the vault. Now we'll wrap up the narrative there for tonight. But a few things. Um, oh, uh, go ahead. One thing, yep. I want to wake up and then I want to grab some leaves. Uh-huh. Crumple them up. <laughs> throw them in the air. Then look down and go, Baron's making us breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I can ignore a sign. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a couple of things that will happen here um, we do play next week so we'll get to pick up on all of this next week but do 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 that would be some level up music <laughs> oh yeah. uh -huh. so a yeah. level up has happened um let me know uh, where you guys think you want your characters to go. I'm planning on you all getting to have about a month of downtime. 
So any special projects your characters would want to do um, different things. Uh, and this can be a way, we can have the month if you want to happen at the end. Actually, let's try to plan for that to happen at the end of next session. So next week we will have you guys kind of get where you're going to be for a little while and then your characters will have some recovery time because you guys have been through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think a little bit of R&R &R for your characters is very well deserved. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi. But uh, congratulations. And um, if you guys can start thinking about where you want to go, because this is one of those things of uh, creating a little bit of a sandbox world. I know things that are happening out in the world, but it depends on where your characters wish to go and explore. Okay. <laughs> Remember when we had that guy with us who had two heads? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll pop back into chat. We got to pull up a winner for um, the giveaway. Just Druid. And say, yep, just Druid. <laughs> druid. <laughs> for our Druid. Oh my gosh, you guys, that was awesome. <sighs> just Druid. Please. I've. Yeah. I've been trying to get to that point of uh, that. <laughs> just do <drew> it. <laughs> the undead army attacking the Underdark for so long. <laughs> it's a hell of a scene. Yeah. And I'm sure that's not going to end badly for anything Surely. <laughs> just web it up it's gonna be fine we're not uh -huh. gonna get through uh -huh. albie's yeah. webs uh, yeah I mean, they, basically, they basically just got rid of the bad guys for us right right yeah so we're all good now yeah no i think we're good on that yeah. the bad guys fighting the bad guys you know that's what oh happens oh my god oh my god what? so because of multi-classing i finally hit level eight as a monk yeah uh oh oh are you doing I a mean, feat or are you doing an asi what's that asi or a feat Oh, ASI. Mm -hmm. Dabney wants that sweet, sweet 19 AC. Ah. <laughs> oh, no, my dex was already at 20. I just bought my wisdom. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Uh, did we pull the... Da, 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 did everybody enter? The winner, the winner uh, for the, the deck of our beastie deck that I swear our ship... Yep, go ahead and close. Yep, pull the, pull it now. Who's gonna win the deck of the <laughs> No idea! Ah! Yeah. No idea, no idea. Our shipping department <laughs> will send this out. <laughs> At some point, I promise. I'm gonna try my best to get to the post office. Congratulations, no idea. Congratulations, no idea. Thing. It is awesome compendium of wild beasts from Gem Hammer. It is great. Um, so we will be back next week and finding out where you guys are going and what you all are doing. Um, I'm looking forward to, it. and uh, again, there's one of the things about this world is stuff is happening even when you guys are not there. Um, so you, there's a lot of options very relevant for all of your characters. Yeah, you'll get it. 2021 sounds about right. <laughs> that is a reasonable expectation. <laughs> now, I'm hoping before I leave for Game Hall Con, I will get everything sent out. <laughs> or by the end of the week, I'll try to get everything sent out. <laughs> Still better than I'm doing. <laughs> Ooh, oh, my Oh, yay! We got raided. We got raided? <gasps> two people. That's cool. Thank you for the raid. Viewers. Where are the ratings at? I don't know where. I'm the, old, I'm the old guy. I don't know where. Uh, uh, where's the stuff? Where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the, stuff? Where's the where's all the things that are happening? <laughs> Hello to new viewers. So, welcome. We have just Hello, finished welcome. up one, one arc of this overarching campaign. Oh, Fluffle Stupid, thank you. Oh my god, wait. 
Thanks, stupid. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we're gonna. Okay. Oh, okay. This is from Lawful Stupid. That sorry, I'm hearing Sven. Sven is the voice of God in my ears right now. So. <laughs> Um, but we will wrap up our stream and we will see everyone next week. It's so good to be back and I'm really looking forward to this. So thank you, everybody. We will thank see you all next week. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.